This episode brought to you by Tony Stark. And hello everyone, uh, Daniel here, back with another uh, podcast. I think it's podcast number six. Oh yeah. Yep. And Ligamy is off somewhere. Like he he got himself into trouble or something. I don't know. Hope he doesn't get himself in any more trouble like last time. That didn't end well. <laughs> yeah, but he he got lost somewhere. I don't know. I guess we'll have to go find him later. I don't know. But yeah. I mean, he can build himself a little Lego car and drive somewhere, so, yep, Lego figures can get a little irresponsible, don't tell him I said that. <clears throat> Anyways, so, yep, so, I, uh, of course, back here with host uh, Daniel Goldenlight Pictures, and, uh, of course, again, co-host uh, Mr. Fluffy Pants. Hello, guys. Yep, no Fluffy Pants joke this time, because Lego me isn't here, so. <laughs> and didn't have leg didn't really have one last time either, so, I don't know. Anyways, for Lego news, Lego Comic Con, like Comic Con is coming up, and with that we got the Legos. Um, uh, so uh, and just triggered some people by saying Legos, but anyways, uh, uh, but we got the some figures and builds are gonna be starting the figures, and looks like this is the one that a lot of people are jealous of because it's a, fig a, lot, a figure a lot of people wanted, but it is technically a physical figure now, which is Spider-Man PS4, the, the, the advanced suit. Um. I've actually honestly seen a lot of people like like they actually wanted the suit, so some are disappointed that it's Comic Con. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna be kind of blunt here. I just honestly don't care. Oh really? You didn't like Spider Man PS4? Never played it. Don't yeah. really have a gaming system, so we don't really care to play it. Right, me, me neither. But like, like, have you at least look at the cutscenes? The cutscenes are amazing. I haven't. You should, but um. But yeah, like Spider-Man PS4, it is was a popular game. It is deba debatably uh, the best Spider-Man game ever, and uh, so like because of that, a lot of people did want an advanced suit like PS4 uh, figure. But and now they're kind of disappointed that it's Comic Con because they, um, it'd be a little trickier for people to get their yeah, hands on it. But like I think I'm kind of in that group, but also at the same time, like like it's Comic Con, they gotta have some special figures. So if if you want to make really make it special, that's the way to do it. Yeah, I mean. It's just nothing really too special to me personally, though. I know, but the, the printing is really good. Like, look at those legs. Look at that. Yeah, and that, I mean, it just needs to get like some arm printing or something. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, uh, but it does look pretty accurate to the game. That's for sure. I cannot believe an actual Marvel figure that has leg printing. Cough, cough, Captain Marvel. <laughs> mhm. Mm but the Fireman did get leg printing, so. Yeah. Um. Yep, yeah, poor Cat Marvel's gonna have to be stealing Fireman's leg, same way Gabby Gabby was trying to steal Woody's voice box in Toy Story 4, so. <laughs> Spoilers, but. Cough, cough, loss. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, then again, if you put Anisha's legs from Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 on her, she looks better, so that's why I did. I might do that, I got that figure. There you go, so that's what you can do. Um, but. But uh, nothing too much of that to say. But I do think it is a really great yeah, figure, and like I haven't played the game, I wish. But of what I've seen of the game, like it's amazing. Like the cutscenes, like like it's a video game, but it almost looks realistic. Like it looks so semi-realistic. I have heard that the game is pretty good, though. Yeah, and um, and like this is like the main suit that you get to fly around in or web around in in the um, game, and like it just uh, so it definitely looks um, really good. But I can never understand why some people would be upset that they won't get to. Um, I get it, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised though if like they might come out with an air Lego set with the suit. It just wouldn't be as good, but maybe they could possibly always put in like a PS4 suit in a, a future Spider-Man set or something. I feel like most likely that they would probably do a like a promotional poly bag, maybe. Mm. Still waiting for a Stan Lee promotional pair, um, a pair, um, poly bag. Yeah, please do that, Lego. Either that, or just put him as a random citizen in a set or something. That's almost what I feel like the Lego would do, is they would just put him in a random set and just um, have him as a citizen. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, and then we got a, we got another fi uh, figure from uh, Com uh, Con, which is <laughs> Zebra Batman. <laughs> now, what the heck is this? <laughs> but, like, seriously, this looks like something that would come in a Batman book, but Comic Con? <laughs> I didn't know they were still doing Lego Batman movies, eh? <laughs> yeah, especially for Comic-Con. Like, I thought Comic- Like, I heard Lego Batman uh, movie 2 is coming out, but wow. Yeah, this is fast. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, see, what should we- 
What should we make uh, for? Like, I think this is what I've been commenting on on in different videos. What should we make uh, for DC um, <laughs> San Diego Con Con figure? I don't know, Zebra Batman. You're hired. <laughs> Um, so this is like a Batman Beyond figure that kicked me out of the building. <laughs> that would be dope, actually. Batman Beyond. I don't know. But, but, I don't know. But suppose Batman figure, like, I mean, suppose it still looks um, good, though. Like, even printing on the cowl and whatnot. Again, again, like printing. And the cape oh. is kind of cool. But, but I think this is the, the one that is, it can be fun to make fun of, you know? <laughs> I mean, if you're like a hardcore Batman fan, um, because this like it did appear in the comics, and I'll uh, right, you know, it'd be nice for you. Right, but also same time, wasn't there also like Zebra Man as a villain? So I don't know why. I think so. Right, so I don't know why there's also Zebra Batman, but okay. No, but it's definitely unique though. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. that's for sure. Oh yeah, it's also weird. Of, like, this is also for the 80th anniversary, so for anniversary. Like, uh, the summer sets are. Yeah, so you're doing an anniversary figure of Batman with Zebra? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, this is, like, this is a figure that is, I have fun to make fun of, that's all. Anyways, moving on. Anyways, enough of those jokes. Hey. da 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 Batman. <laughs> uh, and then, um, is that all for Comic-Con figures? I think it's just builds now. It's just those two figures. Okay, breaking news, breaking news, um, as we're recording, more stuff got revealed, so that, that's always annoying when that happens, but it happened, so. Yeah, so some things got revealed, I think it was mostly more convention stuff, so, um, more SDC figures, I guess we also got Stranger Things. Yeah, so, you know, this opens up possibility for more Stranger Things sets in the future. Possibly, like, I think I might have said this before, but, um... I, I almost feel like Stranger Things could possibly take Lego Simpsons route, where, like, uh, maybe the first set uh, is popular and sells well. It, it kind of seems like Stranger Things set has done that, and, like, for, uh, it has, like, Lego Stranger Things has gotten quite the fandom, so I kind of feel it's like... It's, like, backlogged on Lego.com right now. Oh, really? Wow. But... Yeah. But yeah, so kind of feel like uh, since the f first, it could take the Simpsons route, which is since the first set is successful, it could possibly come back in a year or so with an air set, and then you know maybe come out of some some other you know, thing, uh, and then then the series the theme would probably stop making a more short lived theme. I hope it keeps going though. I don't know. Like I kind of feel like that's the route it would probably take. It, was, it would probably just be like the Lego Simpsons, where I might get an air set or two and then stop. And again, Simpsons you know SDCC exclusive. Hmm. Right. Also, Simpsons they got a minifigure series, so I don't know. I'm not sure if they, right. not sure if they would do a Strange Things minifigure series, but I don't know. Anyway, so um, so Barb figure um looks good, but Ashton Flash um, did it better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she could use better hair. Yeah, like, like again, Justin Good did a, a Strange Things series, so Ashton Flash has actually made um, a Barb figure, and I've actually like. He made a video about it, and I went over and saw his bar figure. I was like, yeah, actually, his is kind of more accurate. <laughs> I mean, I think the torso, though, is exclusive, I want to say. Yeah, I, th I think it is. But, yeah, but, the, but yeah, it does have nice printing, and the face is nice. Yeah, it's just that, I mean, I don't really care too much about it. I mean, she was just not in the show that much, but, I mean... It's cool for, like, collectors that, like, mega fans of Stranger Things. I know. Like, like for some... I actually did see some people, like, saying that this was an outrage because, you know, there's some people... I guess some people apparently do want Barb and they want to add it to their Stranger Things collection, but they won't be able to now. Like, it's kind of the same situation with um, PS4 here. True. But, but yeah. <laughs> Barb figure, like, I don't have to, nothing too much to say. Like, just kind of same with these other Comic Con figures. Like, you can just talk about them within two minutes, but... Yeah, Bart figure, good, probably not very much of a believable we'll get, which that would probably he upset some people, and, like, oh yeah, also, I don't know, who knows, maybe if we get an exchange thing instead, maybe we could get a better barber than that. It just doesn't interest me too much. I know, but Ashley Flash did it better, so, like, good, still a good figure, but, anyways. And then, um, other, uh convention thing got um and they're like continuing the thing with uh Darth Vader bus we now got Sith Trooper bus and this is for uh is this for Comic-Con or is this another convention oh, this is for Comic-Con oh, okay yep yeah. okay so um so we got Sith Trooper bust and um 
Is this trooper's new trooper? Yeah, for Rise of Skywalker. Oh, okay, which is probably why, like, like I know who who knows. Maybe I see Rise of Skywalker and the troopers would be better, but I just say it just kind of seems like a not very iconic character. So I don't know. Well, there was a the helmet for like the regular minifigure of this leaked. Um, like the helmet mold for like the sets. So that that does look interesting. Hmm. Right, like still cool looking trooper and all, but like it's kind of a character we don't really know yet, you know. Like yeah, having. I love my new trooper designs though. Yeah, true, and we usually usually get them. Like get the new troopers for Rogue One solo, but also I think. Oh yeah. Plus, also like I think troopers don't do too much for me. Like they're cool and all, but you know, don't really pay too much attention to them. So. Yeah, like my favorite stormtrooper design is uh, the short trooper from Rogue One. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. Wait, snow trooper? I thought that was solo. A shore trooper. Stormtrooper? A shore. Shore? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, like a beach. Oh, yeah. What, what are those called? Range troopers? Uh, or def those were in Solo on the train. Or, those were range troopers. Um, Death troopers. Isn't that what it was that you're talking about, or the different one? Uh, death troopers are the Krennix, uh, like, black personal ones. Okay, the ones I'm talking about were on the uh, Scarif. This 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 discussion shows you how much I know about Star about uh, Star Wars troopers here, folks. <laughs> Probably some people are triggered because some pe some Star Wars fans like to you know know the troopers and whatnot. So I just wish we got a mud trooper though, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, like the the bus is cool and all, but doesn't do too much for me. Like does look kind of cool, but also looks like there's not very much exclusive figures. So some people could just brink link this and build this. Well, what's interesting on the bottom box is an early release edition, so that means it's going to come out later. Mm, that could be interesting. But like the Darth Vader one, kind of. Right, but the Darth Vader one is limited to release, so is that probably what they're going to do with this, yeah. then? If, they, if, they, yeah, if, uh, if they're going to do that... You'll be able to get this though, later, though. Okay, if they're going to do that for this, can they please do it for the Comic-Con Marvel, Cat Marvel set, too, please? <laughs> but, I don't know. I wish. <laughs> but, I don't know, um... But yeah, like, it's okay bust and all, but, like, Darth Vader 1 was more interesting. Yeah, I just don't really care for these Star Wars buzz, though. Mm. Like, I like them, I just like, uh, I just like them better when they have more iconic characters. Uh. Right. Like, I think that was a question in, uh, Just Good's video, was if they made more, uh, Dar uh if they made more busts, what other characters would you want to see? And, like, I think, as you noticed in the conversation, I think I was pretty much literally the only person who answered it, and I think I said, like, Darth Maul or one of the Fets, and I, <laughs> it did, that comment did get popular. <laughs> I would like Boba Fett, though, that'd be pretty cool. Right, and then I also said Darth Maul, like, okay, we technically have gotten Darth Maul bust before, but that was, like, 20 years ago. Not so. awful. No, it wasn't that bad. It was pretty bad. I don't know. So, but it could be cool to get Darth Maul one. And I just want to see a buildable lightsaber set. Mm. Oh yeah, that could be cool. I'm wow, I'm surprised. I kind of forgot. I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. Uh, it'd be like you can get like different colored blades for it and all. It'd be really cool. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. Twenty years of Lego Star Wars and they haven't done that yet. <laughs> that sounds like that could be dope. Open it up and like have a Kyber crystal in it. Oh yeah. Maybe like um power function so it can light up. <laughs> Oh yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, maybe like a billable pistol too. Blaster. Yes. Yeah, like Han Solo's blaster with like a little stand. That'd be awesome. Yes. Yes, yes, blaster. Oh yeah. Can't wait to spend two hundred dollars on a blaster. <laughs> but um, but yeah, uh, bus is uh, cool and all. Just doesn't do too much for me. But, I mean, they're... but yeah, would like to see more busts like this though. If they could do some cooler characters. So. I don't know the helmet. Like the front part of the helmet does looks a little wonky to me. Mm. I don't know. I could see that, but not too bad. I mean, they did the best they could. For Con Con figures, I think it's just builds now. It's just those two figures. Yep, and then there's builds, like, speaking of Batman, we got this little, like, also for 80th anniversary, like, I actually do think this is probably, like, if you're trying to do, like, an anniversary of Batman, this is probably a better thing for that. Yeah, like, it's a little diorama, which, you know, I do like. Alright, I think when I first saw that, I just thought, meh, but then as I got into it, it's kind of cool, like, it looks like he's on, like, a chimney top, and you get to see the background Gotham, and I'm, like, I'm just wondering, like, like, is that background actually all brick built, or is it, like, some of it is, uh, brick built and then background? Can't tell. Uh, it's all Oh wow, that's cool. Okay, then I, I think I just liked it better then, but. 
And, um, but yeah, Jenny Sub does look kind of cool. And, like, Little Batman, eight, and, um, 80 years, like, hopefully that's printed. Uh, I think it, it, I don't know, it looks like a sticker, kind of. Mm. It's hard to tell. I don't know, but it is kind of like a cool, like, little vignette build. Yeah, like a little gargle. Mm, yeah. Ghostbusters. Uh, 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 speaking of later. Yep. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> great man, I'm a great mind to you like. But, and do like the little tiny skyscrapers and like how like it looks like they're lighting up and... Is, does Batman have a shadow? Uh, I don't know. It looks like it. But like, I do like all the scaling they did like, to, you know, make it look like, you know, the pr perspective. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, I, I didn't, I thought it was uh, kind of in when I first saw it, but now it's kind of growing on me, like, like, like but but yeah i do kind of feel like this is a more nicer like like vignette style sort of, uh, thing to have like for like a comic-con anniversary set so and, you know you can really just build this with like pieces at home and stuff mm. there's something you can keep in mind folks if you want to build something from comic-con build it yourself i'm pretty sure that batman ain't exclusive yeah it isn't but like but that that's good though that like that, like they don't always have to have um comic-con exclusive figures of the sets so, yeah. yeah, nothing too much to say. The, the one I think we really want to talk about, Captain Marvel set. Oh, yeah. I got a lot to say. Yeah, well, we didn't have too much to say about uh, the other sets, because, like, they're still in the figures, but, like, they're still good and all, but the one we really want to talk about, like, I think this is even one there. One that's kind of like, almost like a PS4 situation where, like, a lot of people were complaining about it being exclusive, which is Captain Marvel one. <laughs> like, yeah. But this, this, the Aces. Right. This is great, though. Like, like, like. As you probably know, if you listen to a podcast before, um, if you listen to our Captain Marvel podcast, I wasn't the biggest fan, but this set is awesome. Boy, I love this set. This is like the shit that she's like test pouting in with uh, Marvel. Yeah, and I think this is the one that a lot of people are talking about. This, uh, the thing that a lot of people are talking about is like this Comic Con exclusive set. Like speaking of exclusives, has not one but two exclusive figures. Maria Rambo, I think her hair is exclusive and her face, I want to say. Mm, maybe. And and then the one that it looked like a lot of people uh, might have had a little bit of a problem with, which was the Captain Marvel Kree suit. I like, I mean, that's a cool suit, and I wish we would have got it, like, in a regular set, but we did not. Mm, I kind of I can't hope they do it, in their, like, uh, do it in an air set, hopefully. Then the regulars yeah. can get it. But yeah, no leg printing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, again, Cat Marvel, no leg printing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, do, like, does that outfit even have boots? Yeah. It does. Yeah. Okay, but um, but it, like, besides the no leg printing, it does look really good, though. Like, it, like the printing does look really good. For sure. And um, the flirting cat. It's a little, like, little stand it has for. It. The flirking cat, the tentacles. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting build. Yep. It does not connect to the lips, though. <laughs> I, was, I saw that on Twitter. Like, someone revealing on Twitter, like, the actual picture. Like, it's not connected to the lips, though. You just gotta display it, display it next to his lips, but there's no connection. Like, his, uh, that little stand part that, he's stand, that the cat's actually standing on that's connected to. Yeah. Goosey, I'm afraid to hold you now. <laughs> Uh, Goose and Nick Fury were funny in that movie. Sure. But, and yeah, and then like the little spaceship is like a nice little display build, and like I think also even like a new like recolored uh, Benny's uh, suitcase from uh, Lego Movie Two series there. I think so. Recolored in his little toolbox. And he has like a little uh, cool cockpit and stuff. Mm. Right. Like. But yeah, I think this is that, like, I almost wish, like, this was, like, a Darth Vader bus situation where, like, it was Comic Con exclusive, but then I also have it, like, you know, quickly exclusive to, like, Walmart or Target or something for a limited time or something. I kind of wish it was like that, because it kind of seems like this would be a good set for that. Yeah, like, you would say, like, hotcakes, I feel like. Yeah, like, I kind of feel like, like, I, I think I saw a lot of people actually being a little bit upset over this, of saying, like, like, oh, it's good, so I won't be able to get it. I'm a little upset about it. I don't know, but... Like, I think I probably would be more excited, but except for I do understand the situation, like, it's Comic-Con, so... So, like, that's just how things are? Yeah, I mean, at least, like, I'll make another set that has, like, uh, you know, that Captain Marvel in it. I don't know, or I just, 
I, I do kind of wish that they would just have it be like, um, like just do like what you did with Darth Vader bus. I like just have it like you can buy it from Target for a limited time or something. Yeah. But because like that that crease suit does really look good, and the the flurkin tentacles, even though that's probably their ability to build yourself, but. Like that one, uh, they use like a tree limb piece. That's like in a pink color. I think that might be exclusive. Oh wow! Yeah, a lot of exclusive things for Comic Con exclusive. Yeah. Like this might be the most exclusive Comic Con exclusive set. I'm pretty sure that's a new hair piece for her too. Mm -mm. Oh, for uh, for for Maria or Cam Marvel? Maria. Uh, yeah, it might be. Wait, or doesn't she have a helmet? She does have a helmet too. Oh, okay, but. But yeah, like, I can understand why some people would be upset, but I also kind of understand the situation, but it definitely that is a fine-looking set, that's for sure. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah, this is coming from a person that was more mixed feelings than Captain Marvel. So there you go. I kind of enjoyed it a little bit more. Yeah. Kind of like another movie we'll be talking about later. <laughs> wink, wink. Is that it? Let's see, um, I think that's it for, like, uh, what? Oh yeah, Harley Davidson, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what's next for Lego. Uh, there's also just revealed, like, a new, um, like, this is going to be part of the sub-theme of Lego expert, creator expert of, um, the different vehicles, like the Volkswagen Beagle and whatnot, and it's, uh, Volkswagen, uh, motorcycle, and it looks pretty dope. This is Harley Davidson. Oh, yeah. Wait, isn't that pretty much, like, the most famous motorcycle company ever? Yeah, it's called Harley Davidson Fat Boy Motorcycle. Nice. Which, I mean, this looks really nice for, like, a hundred bucks. I think that's a pretty nice price. Mm. How many pieces is it? It's got 1,023. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That does look cool. Oh. <laughs> oh, just did someone put that Roadhog on the, the Harley Davidson motorcycle? And I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone do that. That yeah. boy motorcycle for the <laughs> fat Roadhog. <laughs> Oh yeah, what? what Wait, hang on, it even says, uh, it even says wheels with beefy tires. Yeah. What were you saying about uh, oversized motorcycles again, Fluffy? <laughs> oh, hang on, this is actually a good one though. Right, that's true. Like, like this is actually like a good like expert set, and like it looks really good. Like also like the little gears and whatnot. It's like a good model too. Like the motors are really right? realistic in there. Like, like honestly, like I don't really buy very much of the Creed Expert vehicles, but this one's almost tempting. Like, like I think there's like three that are tempting. Like Creed Expert vehicles are kind of tempting me. It's like this one, the the Mustang, and uh, the James Bond one. I love the Mustang one. Mm, yeah, like I think I almost got that, but I didn't. Like I think I was gonna get it to get the keychain, even though I got the keychain um, after all just by buying a random set. So I don't know how that worked. I'm just saying that Lego should uh, reskin the Volkswagen one into yellow and uh, yeah, make Bumblebee. put it under the Bumblebee. Yeah, that'd be cool. I would buy that in an instant. Yeah, of course you would. Oh yeah, I see a funny story about that. Like, I, I have recently seen Bumblebee, so um, so I do know all that stuff. And it would probably be the only Transformers movie I'll watch, but... Except uh, for, like, uh, sequels to Bumblebee. Mm, yep. Yeah, I'll probably, I probably would watch those. You know, you know honestly, like, like, the first one ended pretty well, too, so I don't exactly know how they can continue it, but... <clears throat> Anyways, um, oh yeah, also it's also funny that my neighbors also have a yellow Volkswagen Beetle, so I almost want to go over to them and ask them, like, can I look under your Volkswagen Beetle car, please? <laughs> you could always, like, brick link the parts for Volkswagen Beetle, just get Volkswagen Beetle instructions and then just brick link the parts. It probably cost you, like, a hundred bucks, but at least you then you have a Bumblebee. True. Yeah, that, that's what I would do. But... And sidetrack talking about transformers over uh, <laughs> over a motorcycle, but anyways, um, also like the, the like random thought like also keeps making me think of Terminator because like in Terminator because in Terminator two like after he walks out of the bar like it's either as he's walking out of the bar or as he's uh, walking into the bar like he's like scanning a Harley Davidson and I think he also rides off on one too so it somehow makes me think of Terminator. Oh yeah, they should sure release this around like the new movie coming out. Mm. Mm, I'm not sure if they'll make uh, sets for the ne new movie. Like, and if they were going to, it probably would have been announced by now. Um, yeah, and also like the little handles on there look cool, and like that little mirrors. Yeah, like like honestly, it does look like a really good model. Sure. Yeah. So, do I have anything else to add? Is it or... That's it for me. Okay. It makes me think of I'm Terminator, and someone put uh, the hog on there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
But yeah, I think with LEGO topics, I think we had plenty of LEGO topics. We just didn't have too much to say on them, so... I mean, we do also have LEGO Stranger Things, but maybe we should talk about that later, since that's more older LEGO news, so maybe we can talk about that later, so if anyone wants to hear about that, they can uh, skip ahead to watch that later. Yes. Yeah, so that's what we would do. Like, like, let's do a weird pattern here. Talk about LEGO, dodge a movie, and then switch over to LEGO again. Good plan? Sure, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so on to movie topics. Uh, let's see what we got here. Did you want to start with Ghostbusters? Oh, yeah. This is definitely an interesting one. Uh, so, yeah, Ghostbusters title. Uh, Ghostbusters 2020. Which is kind of, actually, kind of a lame title, in my opinion, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can kind of, uh, you know, I, 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 then again, they might have, like, a, you know, like, a subtitle later. I don't know, like, like, like... Like, is it actually called 2020, or is it Ghostbusters parentheses 2020? Uh, I'm not sure yet, because, you know, it's kind of early. I guess we'll really find out when the first trailer comes out. Mm. Yeah, I guess, but I guess if the title is actually 2020, then I guess that actually means um, the movie take place in present time then, which is interesting. Yeah, because I think this is supposed to be like a, you know, like it's discarding a... The reboot a couple of years ago is going to be like Ghostbusters three. Right, but that, that's actually honestly what I think they should have called it. Like, why twenty twenty? Just call it three. Like, if it's three, call it three. Just call it three. I also think it's going to kind of be like a soft reboot where it's not like a direct sequel, but it's like you know it takes place after all those movies. If they if they just take like a Force Awakens or Jurassic World, uh, you know, like move with it, that'll be fine. Like that. Yeah. Like. Do we still know if the return if uh, the returning characters are coming back or not? Yeah, I think uh, they said that uh, like uh, Dan Aykroyd, uh, Bill Murray, and uh, whoever plays Winston is coming back. Mm, yeah. Uh, so, oh, is Bill Murray coming too? Because I thought the problem yeah. was Bill Murray refused to come on for another one, and that was the problem. Uh, I think Dan Aykroyd wrote the script, so Bill Murray uh, agreed to come. Mm. Oh, interesting. So, it's just, it's just like the other uh, Ghostbusters movies as well, because I think Dan Aykroyd wrote the first two as well. And then, uh, this one's directed by the son yeah, it's of the yeah. director of the first two. I think, that's, that, I think that's kind of what makes me, like, think it could be promising. Yeah. But, I, just please don't screw this up, but... Uh, and, like, for this movie, they also had, like, some casting news here recently. Yeah, we're going to be getting to that. But, yeah, with the title, let's hope we have a Ligamy 2 situation where the movie's better than that title. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Still don't really like the Le the Lego Movie Two title. Lego Movie Two second part. Yeah, this just sounds awful. Yeah, it's kind of redundant. I don't know. I just call it Lego Movie. Um, uh, I think it should have been called Lego Movie Part Two. But anyways, like that would have sounded better. But but yeah, casting choice. I think this is the one you would probably be excited about. Uh, that um, one of the one of the stars of the new movie is gonna be none other than. All right. All right. Oh yeah. AKA, My boy. Yep. AKA your your avatar. Oh yeah. And uh, there's even like a little trailer of him like recording like with a selfie stick and all like with the firehouse in the background. I did see that the other day. Yeah, me too. Or like saw it like other week. Yeah, you know. Anyways, <laughs> but but yeah, <laughs> that is. Um, I think that is actually a good choice. Like I could see Paul Rudd in a Ghostbuster role. Like like he's funny and Ghostbusters is funny, so I can honestly see him in a Ghostbusters role. Uh, it's like, a good choice. I, I'm excited to see what like what exactly like role he's playing. Though. Oh, I, I think I heard he's a, he's a teacher. He's like a teacher. Oh, character. okay. I think he might be like the father to one of the uh, main kid stars of the movie. That would make sense. Like we don't exactly still don't really know what the plot is, but like if they're doing like kid Ghostbusters, that could be interesting. And like, and there's like two like uh, kids already cast in the movie. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think they had a casting call a while back, so. Yeah, we know Finn Wolfhard's gonna be in it. Mm. But, but yeah, uh, I'm just thinking though, like him playing a teacher. So I guess that means he's gonna be a side character then, which that's a shame. That's a shame because how, how can you resist the temptation to put a proton pack on Paul Rudd? <laughs> uh, just put Paul Rudd in a Ghostbusters outfit for me, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh no. Like, how can they resist the temptation to do that? But I don't know. Or I think some people are saying like maybe the teacher king character could be kind of like Rick Moranis in the first two. Just, like, the bumbling side character, you know? Uh, totally. Uh, yeah, like, maybe he can be kind of like that. Which, that could be interesting. I could see that. Right. 
but I'm sure he'll be good. Like, I'm, I'm def- I don't really think he, he could be good for Ghostbusters. One thing I kind of find ironic is uh, Finn Wolfhard, if he puts on a Ghostbusters outfit, he already did in Stranger Things. Eh? Oh, 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 was he in Stranger Things? Season 2? He, he played uh, Mike. Nice. Which also ironic because I think, like, also in TV show Friends, um, I think uh, Paul Rudd's character's name was named Mike, so we're going to have two Mikes. So, but, yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, the little selfie video, too, is also just, you know, charming old Paul Rudd, you know. Like, it, it really seems like he's excited to be in it as well. Like, I can kind of tell he's he seems to be excited about getting to be in Ghostbusters, so that's nice. I think... I didn't think I heard Sigourney Weaver's gonna come back. Mm, I can see that. Because, I mean, she came back for the last one, so... Yeah. She came back for uh, Ghostbusters 2016, so... A little cameo. Yeah. Didn't she have two cameos, or no? I uh, two. I just searched, like, she was, like, a kind of after-credit kind of scene. Mm, yeah. Something like that. But... But, I don't know. Just just gonna see... I guess we'll I just wait and see whether or not uh, Ant-Man will get a proton pack or not. <laughs> Just waiting to see the first trailer. Yep, yep, me too. I'll be waiting. Maybe, maybe, maybe by the end of this year, Long Talk Gun Two, if we're lucky. Totally. Right. Yeah, I, that's another thing I keep thinking is um, next year we're supposed to be getting Ghostbusters, Top Gun, and possibly Bill and Ted. So I guess next year is going to be quite the retro year. I still need to watch uh, the Bill and Ted movies. Mm, you should. They're good. Well, okay, first one's good. Second one is uh, is bad, and hopefully third one will be good too. So, like, a little Marvel joke here. Ghostbusters 2016 had Thor, and then Ghostbusters 2020 has Ant-Man. How about that? <laughs> and also, still a weird point out, uh, Ghostbusters 19... And came, the first Ghostbusters came out in 1984, election year, and then, like... Oh, wait, no, wait, that's uh, Ghostbusters 2. 1989, which was election year. And then um, Ghostbusters 2016, obviously election year. And then uh, next year, Ghostbusters 2020, which is election year. So what is up with Ghostbusters specifically being interested in elections? <laughs> <laughs> What's up with Ghostbusters and elections? I don't know. Strange. Yeah. Strange. And then next uh, movie news, I also got more news on Black Widow, another movie coming out next year. A lot of 2020 movies here, and then this podcast is very good. But, yeah, I'm still curious of how Black Widow is going to go, especially after Endgame. But anyways, um, but I think the big news, like I think even Fluffy himself made a video on this, which was we're going to possibly be a villain of uh, Black Widow being Taskmaster. And I really hope this is true because I've been wanting to see him for a very long time on the big screen. Mm. Right, kind of like me and Mysterio. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, isn't it like we're determining that Taskmaster from, uh, these, uh, photos here? Like, the leaked photos? Yeah, like, uh, pretty much, like, they were filming this whole chase sequence where, like, there's this, uh, character driving a tank through Budapest, uh, mm. and people are kind of drawing comparisons to Taskmaster, Master, which I do believe that this is, uh, who it is in the picture. Mm. Right, which that could be interesting, which, um, I don't know too much about in Taskmaster, but, like, um, but I have studied different, like, Spider-Man stuff. I think I remember him being, like, a little bit of a Spider-Man villain. Oh, uh, he, he's kind of like a, a, he's just kind of like a small, he's not like a big villain, but he's kind of fought a little bit with everybody in the comics. Right. So, basically, basically kind of like Kingpin. He's like a mercenary that can, he can pretty much do any tasks that he sees. He's got like a photographic memory. Mm. So, so, so like, uh, I think in the comics he like became a pro football player by just watching one game of pro football. A lot. Mm, definitely sounds interesting. But, oh yeah, I think I'm a big, I think you might have said that in your video. Yeah. But, but it definitely sounds like that could be interesting, like, like. Like, also could be interesting for, like, Spy, because, like, like, hopefully Black Widow is, like, a spy movie, I hope, like, like maybe, like, Jason Bourne, uh, James Bond style, uh, spy oh, yeah. movie, and, like, that, that could be a good villain, you know, a villain with full of memory, you know, spying on you, and he can remember everything, that could be interesting. Oh, yeah, especially since he's a mercenary, too. Mm. Interesting. But, um, so how exactly are you determining that it's as much as, like, the outfit or something? A lot of people are saying that, uh, you know, his helmet, it kind of looks like a skull, but not really. Mm. But he also has, like, the telltale hood that Taskmaster's known for in the comics. Mm. Does Taskmaster have a skull? And, like, his, in the comics, he has, like, a skull mask or a helmet. Mm. 
that. But like, my only problem is uh, Taskmaster in the comments. He kind of has like a dark blue, kind of like here, but it's also he has a lot of uh, orange, which he doesn't have any orange here. But mm. yeah, but but I feel like you'll get like another costume later in the movie that's like more comic accurate. Right, because it's not always how it is. <coughs> Spider Man, <coughs> uh, uh, Aquaman, <coughs> Iron Man. <coughs> Should I go on? Oh, wait, wait, no, Iron Man didn't get a comic book like, accurate suit. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank well, he kind of did an in game. Wait, did, did he? Oh, wait, no, that was Ant Man. Wait, what? Did he get a comic book accurate suit in Endgame? Wait, when? When? Like, he got the uh, comic book accurate colors where, like, his upper arms are gold and. Hmm. Right, like I think, I think like the comic book Iron Man I think about was like like a big like campy suit and like his his mask looks like a mouth. Like his costume for his look, he's got an iron poncho on. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I think this movie's gonna be set around like uh after or like before Civil War. Hmm. Like after Ultron, I think. Oh, okay. So it's like it's not going too back. Like, I thought it was possibly going to take place, like, like 90s or something. I mean, it didn't confirm yet, but I think uh, Jeremy Renner was, uh, uh, like, rumored for the movie, too. Mm. Oh, oh, that could be cool. So then it could be, like, Black Widow and Hawkeye. That could be cool. Yeah, and Budapest, like, in the first Avengers. Mm. Right. Oh, just a second. But yeah, in between Ultron and Civil War, that could be interesting. Or, you know, any time really around there, you know? Mm. Right, and I thought that's kind of when the Avengers controversies start, so that could be interesting. And I think, like, it was, it, some people were even saying it could take place, like, after Civil War, like, after she's gone rogue. Mm, yeah, that could be interesting. But, but yeah, I don't know too much about Taskmaster, but hopefully whatever they do would probably do them justice. Hopefully. Right, like... It definitely could be, like, um, I, I kind of think of it, like, the way you describe it, I probably could picture him as for, like, a spy movie, so, anyway, we'll see what they do. So, and then for movie scene, we usually like to do this for fun. I actually honestly have seen maybe a little too many movies lately, because, like, because, like, like, I actually have been watching a lot lately. Like, for one thing, like, I'm actually, like, like, leading up to Far From Home, I did rewatch like, um, all the, uh, Spider-Man movies. Like, I'm, like, okay, I just need to see, uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, two, and that's about it, but I uh, did, so, like, when I was doing the Spider-Man Marvel looks back, I was actually rewatching them for that. Yeah. So, like, I actually rewatched Sp Spider-Man 1, 2, 3, etc., and then rewatched Homecoming before Far From Home, and then now I've seen Far From Home, so, and then also, um, I saw, did see the new Men in Black, so because that, that got me into Men in Black, so I've now seen all the Men in Blacks. There's four. I haven't watched any of the Men in Black movies. Mm, now that I've seen them all, like they're all like they're all pretty like you know, I'm good movies. Like like it's probably like the best ones are like one and three, and then like the other two are not as good but still enjoyable. Yeah, like entertaining. Right, like like two. It's like like I think two is not as the worst, but even that one I can find some entertainment in it. <laughs> like for me, uh, uh, like my review of a movie really depends on how much I enjoyed it. Mm, yeah, like. It's kind of same here for me, like, I mean, like, like, even with when I'm ranking things, I'm kind of ranking them by my enjoyment. Yeah. I mean, that's really the main thing for me, like, even, like, my MCU list, like, you can tell, like, those are movies I enjoy the more. Right. Like, even for me, like, like, you know, like, with my top five, like, like, technically, like, Civil War is better than Spider-Man and Homecoming, but if you ask me which one I enjoy more, I watch more Spider-Man and Homecoming. Yeah, like, uh, like Winter Soldier is like a more well-made movie than like uh, uh, Guardians Two, but I enjoy Guardians Two more. Mm -hmm. Winter Soldier's great though. Mm -hmm. Second time we've referenced Winter Soldier in this one. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, trying to think of some other ones. Um, also, I did also like pick up a whole bunch of DVDs, so I have a lot to uh, watch through there too. Like, like I think even showed like your hall. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the hall? I did. Like, like I showed like a stack of dude. Like, like I went on vacation and I went you know, to a bookstore. Like my nephews took me there. Thank, thanks again to the nephews. Um, so like they took me to this bookstore that was like they had a bunch of DVDs and like, like with sweet was like most of the DVDs were only like like one to five dollars and then it was also, like half off. So I pretty much got like, so I got like f like five six. I think it was like seven movies for like eight bucks. Yeah. Right. 
including like including I got an entire trilogy too. I got like all, um, like the first three J Jason Bourne movies. So I have the so I have Jason Bourne trilogy. Got all three. And um, yeah. So and then also got um, I think it was also like X Men. So a lot of different ones. And I've seen quite a lot recently. Oh yeah, and then also watched um, um, Toy Story three, the fourth one, and then I saw the fourth one, and then of course Far From Home. Anyways, what about you? Um, I saw the new Annabelle movie a couple weeks back. Yeah. And then I saw Far From Home twice. Nice. And then you know I watched. I don't know if that really counts, but I watched Stranger Things uh, season three. Mm -hmm. That's TV which show. That's kind of like an eight-hour movie, kind of. Mm, yeah, I can see that. There are some TV shows that are like that. Yeah, that's really, like, it that I can really think of right now for me. Mm. But I did watch Ant-Man and the Wasp the other day, though. Nice. I think I did rewatch Ant-Man and the Wasp a couple of months ago. Yeah. Like a month or two ago. Not too long ago. Yeah, I, mean, I do like watching that one, because that one's just so fun to watch, especially since you got my boy Paul Rudd in it. Mm. What's interesting, though, is, like, with Ant-Man movies, like, actually, like... Like, um, I think I prefer the first one, but also I do find myself watching uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp a lot, so... I watched the first one since, like, right before Ant Man the Wasp came out, like, over a year ago. Mm. First one's still good, though. Like, I really like the first one. I think Yellow Jacket's an underrated villain. Until he I think the Yellow Jacket suit's really awesome looking. Until he kills a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> kills a little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think I might have been watching it a little, little bit too, uh, too much, but, like,. But it's because, like, I had to rewatch. I was watching Toy Story for Toy Story, and then Spider Man, and then Men in Black. I think even with Spider Man. Just, like, I think even with Spider Man, after a while, it was like, after, like, watching, like, five uh, Spider Man movies, I think I even, then, like, switched to watch a Man in Black movie to even it out a little more. <laughs> so, like, you know, watch, you know, Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Man, and then, and then watch Man in Black 3, and then. I think Man Black uh, 3. kind of spread it out. Right. Man in Black 3 is especially enjoyable for me because, again, time trouble. That's probably with the Man in Black movies for me. Like, like I guess, like, it's probably the first one's probably the best one. And then like, the other one that I probably liked, uh, like, close as much as the first one was probably the third one. And then probably the new one and then the second one. But I still enjoy the second one. It's just the second one is at the last place because, you know, something's got to be at last place. Yeah. Like, you, you still like all of them. You just have to, you know, put something, you know... Uh, same thing with Toy Story. Like, if, if I had to rank Toy Story four, is still number four, but it's four still good. Like, I'm not saying Toy Story, uh, Story four is bad. It's just, it's just um, at number four because something's got to be at number four. So four is still pretty good. Yeah, I can see that. Plus, also at the same time, like, like I pretty much in a way grew up with the first three, so I can't quite compare, you know, a new one that quickly to movies I've seen to have, you know, for like nine years. I like nostalgia. Mm. Nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, just laughing at something you sent me, so. <laughs> Anyways. <Dirt. laughs> uh, man, man, they're just going to listen to this and wonder what's going on, but. Y'all find out later in the podcast. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, that's a good thing you sent to me, because I could probably use it later. But, oh, yeah, I also uh, forgot. I also watched uh, Forrest Gump. Nice. Yeah, I know you love that movie. One of my favorite movies of all time. Really? Cool. I mean, it makes sense, because he said it was near perfect, so. It really is, though. Mm hmm. What do you think makes it near perfect? Just curious. Um, I don't know. It's just the storytelling and, like, all the scenes weaved together so excellently to me. Mm hmm. Yeah, and also Tom Hanks is good. Like, I almost forget Tom Hanks, and I just, like, you know, see Forrest Gump, I'm thinking, oh, that's Forrest Gump, not Tom Hanks. I mean, Tom Hanks, like, he just, like, melts into the role of Forrest Gump. Mm-hmm. And plus, also, Forrest Gump, he's just kind of those characters where you, you kind of got to like him. It was funny that, um, I think you literally made your review, like, a day before I watched it, and I didn't see that you, uh, reviewed it. So, like, I watched it, and, like, literally the day after I saw you had a review of it, I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good time. I made that review for while I was on vacation. Yeah. But, yeah, which I, I watched it when I was on vacation, so. <clears throat> Yeah, I just love Forrest Gump to death, though. Like, the movie's just so good. Mm-hmm. But, but, yeah, definitely a pretty good movie. But, my problem is, yeah, if, if there's kids watching, you may want to watch it on a filter, though, because, yeah, some things in there you shouldn't see. Yeah, true. 
We got kids should probably get on filter, so <laughs> or watch TV version. Yeah, TV version. It'll probably be a cleaner version. So watch on TV. <laughs> Let's just get right to the movie that you probably, probably some of most people came to actually hear us talk about, which is Spider-Man: Far From Home, the movie that just came out. Probably a lot of people have seen it, so. But just in case, we're gonna be starting with non-spoilers and then spoilers. Yeah, I think we got both interesting takes on the movie. Mhm. Mm yeah. Some un unpopular opinion alerts here, so you've been warned. Er, er. <laughs> um, should I start? Should I start you? Uh, I guess I'll start since you know, uh, your opinion is different than mine. Uh, the long or the short of it is, I love Spider-Man Far From Home. Hmm. Why? Uh, well, I mean, not spoilers. Not spoilers. I will say though, like first, like, third of the movie's a little slow, but, like, once you get that second and third act, like, it's just some of the most enjoyable payoff and, like, character moments, like, in the entire MCU, in my opinion. Hmm. Wow. And, like, I just love, like, some of the action scenes, and, like, there's one, like, really great sequence where I have to get to spoilers, which I absolutely love. Oh, yeah, and, I, think I, I think I know what part you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, uh, but... Yeah, I, I liked that scene, too, to be fair. And, I don't know, it's just, I mean, there's also some other stuff I love, which is, uh, kind of a spoiler, but kind of not, if you know your comics. Um, oh, yeah. Which I did, so. Yeah, which I don't know how many people do, but we'll, we'll kind of get into that in the spoiler part, but, I mean, I just, uh, think Tom Holland's the best live-action Spider-Man, uh, in my opinion, personally, but, I mean, I, I just love this movie to death. I think mm -hmm. it's better than Homecoming. Mm-hmm. Um, oh boy, and this is probably where the hate comments come in. I'm kind of the opposite where didn't hate it, I just thought it was fine. Da, da, da. There's such a thing as saying that, right, folks? <laughs> <laughs> right, but it doesn't then again, it's also because, like, when Homecoming came out, it did kind of become a Spider Man nerd, where, like, I kind of always started studying Spider Man and his history and whatnot, so because that can be a little picky of my Spider Man, so. Kind of backfired on you. Mm. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, that's also, then again, that's also the reason why I don't like The Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, double comments. <sighs> <laughs> From the... So, like, without getting spoilers, like, what are some of the things you didn't really like about it? Oh, like, um, like, there are some things in the trailers that kind of eventually don't add up. Uh, oh, okay, the big problem. Let's just say the movie has some plot twists that I think some of them work and then some of them just don't make sense. Well, I'll definitely have to get more specifics in the spoilers. Yeah, like, it's kind of hard to do non-spoilers, so. That's yeah, true. And and then, yeah, and then, uh, the villain is technically good, but from motivation-wise, uh, it also, again, doesn't really make sense. Doesn't wholly add up. And also, the movie is two hours and, like, I honestly, a few times, um, could kind of feel that <laughs> on a few parts. Yeah, like the, first, like, the first start of the movie for me kind of drags a little bit. Mm, I actually kind of liked the first part, because, like, it had, that had to have some of the high school stuff that I liked in the first movie, so I actually don't mind the first act. Like, I know it's a lot of people saying that I'm bashing the first act, but I, 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 I would defend the first act. Yeah, I mean, for me, because I saw it twice so far, um, I don't know, it just... Especially the second time, it's just kind of dragged. Mm, that's true. Like, like that is kind of another thing. Is yeah, I'm probably more mixed feelings on this movie now, but I also wouldn't be surprised if I ended up liking it more on rewatch. Yeah, but pretty much the short for me is that you know I love this movie. Mm. Yeah, and for me, it's, I just think it's good, but not like like it's good, but still have my problems with it. Yeah. But. So but. Uh, Same, uh, non spoilers for me at least. Right. Just go ahead into spoilers then. Yeah. Okay. There's uh, one particular scene I want to talk about. All right. Which... Hold on. Uh, yep. Again, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Far From Home, get out of here. And go, go. If you haven't seen it, get, <laughs> get out of here. Or spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Uh, 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 okay. Probably we're doing it. But anyways, um, uh, talk about that cross-eyed Mysterio. Woo! <laughs> yep. Dark Mysterio. I call him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like this just made yeah, I, this just made Mysterio better for me. <laughs> it's just 
probably uh, kind of explain what we're talking about. Uh, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll draw a screen when I, when I edit this, but... Uh, yeah, so pretty much, uh, I was watching this movie in theaters. Uh, Dear Mysterious whole uh, speech thing at the bar. Uh, he, he, like, looks right at the camera, and he pretty much has, like, the most derpiest face ever. <laughs> like, cross-eyed. He's like, thanks to Tony Stark. <laughs> like, he looks right at the camera cross-eyed. It's, like, the best thing ever. I just start laughing every time I see Man, it. Man, I, I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> and also not- I mean, he looks right at the camera. He's like, thanks to Tony Stark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that just made me like Mysterio even better, weirdly enough. I don't know, like, what happened there, I think. <laughs> uh, um, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's goofiness jumped in. <laughs> no, I think Jake Gyllenhaal was trying to, or I think he strained his eyes. <laughs> strained, strained his eyes on the dialogue. <laughs> But yeah, now you guys know what I was cracking up about, because, <laughs> like, let's just say, while I was recording this, Fluffy sent me a picture of the cross with Mysterio, so I our record keeps going off, people, so sorry if you get cut off or whatnot. This is one of my new favorite pictures, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we can start up a meme here, a meme here, like, like, you guys take this picture, do whatever you want with it. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> but, like, it happens throughout the whole, uh... He's re- like revealed his evil plan during the bar. Uh, yeah, that yeah. So bar scene, uh, Mysterio. And like that is basically the scene where it's revealed that yeah. Spoiler alert: he's evil. We all figured that out. And which I mean, the whole scene kind of comes off as cliche, but I don't really think it is. Like Jake Gyllenhaal, just his acting. I mean, he has a certain charm to it. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that scene was so goofy. I love it. <laughs> I mean, he made callbacks to a, like the guy that gets yelled at by Obadiah Stane. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Stark was able to build this in a cave. A box of scraps. <laughs> yeah. I am not Tony Stark. <laughs> but except for that uh, guy's working for Obadiah Stane, not Tony Stark, so I don't know why he's going against Tony Stark all of a sudden. But yeah. all this thanks to Tony Stark. Stark. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep cracking up every time I hear that now. <laughs> Thanks to Tony Stark, cross eye. <laughs> uh, Take Joan Hall must have been quite the mood that day. <laughs> but yeah, that that scene is uh, really funny. Like it's so goofy and over the top. It, it's it's great. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just gonna say I think it's. Uh, I thought it was pretty uh, brilliant how like. They explain his uh, illusion stuff uh, off the barf technology. Mm. Oh, yeah. But that also made me wonder, like, is Jake Gyllenhaal possibly in Civil War? Or did they just add that in later? They added that in later, but what amazes me is, like, Kevin Feige and, like, Russo Brothers and stuff, they've been saying for about two years now, all the barf technology will pop up in a big way, but none of us expected Mysterio to be the one using it. Even though we know he uses illusions and stuff, we just, how do we not see that coming? Right, that's true. But, but yeah, that was that, me. that was a good way of using, uh, you know, what you established in their movie and using it for something creative. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just so creative. Uh, explain away, you know, because uh, I mean, his motivation is pretty much uh, my life where Tony Stark uh, kind of threw it to the side and called it barf. Mm. Oh, yeah, that... Yeah, that is kind of where I got. That was also kind of where, like, again, a me mixed feelings. Me, you know, being, being Mr. Kill, Spider-Man, Far From Home, Killjoy here. Uh, that is kind of there. One of my problems I have is Mysterio's motivations a little bit. <laughs> like he's a cool villain, all of the illusions, but his, uh, his motivation is kind of not that great. <laughs> I mean, you also gotta remember this guy's whole life work was like he's expecting, you know, this to do like big things and all. But Tony Stark uses it for his own therapeutic, you know, kind of experiment. And you know that that can kind of be soul crushing to you. Then he calls it barf in front of everybody. But Mysterio's motivations, like, I'm still trying to figure out his motivations. But is it basically because of Tony Stark? Like he's just mad at Tony Stark, so he's becoming a villain, and that's why he wants to be a hero. La la la. Yeah, I mean, because, uh, you know, he didn't really see Tony Stark as, like, a hero, and, you know, he kind of wants that fame and that kind of stuff for himself now, since, you know, Tony, Cap, uh, Natasha, Vision are gone. Mm. So, except for that's also what I'm thinking is, so his motivation is Tony Stark, kind of like Vulture? Yeah. 
like just kind of feel, like <laughs> kind of feel like if, if that's his motivation as Tony Stark, then that's pretty much basically the same as uh, Vulture and Vulture. They did it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say it. They Vulture did it way better. Oh, hang on. I just want to say I love uh, the whole thing at the beginning where it's like the m- memorial montage. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think yeah, I saw that. that in th- I think I just saw that in theater. I was like, "What is the?" And then, uh, and then I realized, "Oh, okay." <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that was great. <laughs> but yeah, I'm actually. I'm kind I get- I kind of feeling like maybe we should maybe we should uh, talk positive later, and then it uh, and then it doesn't like like almost feel like it maybe we should just get the, my negatives out of the way, and then we can talk about positive, so we can end on a positive note. Yeah, because I'm kind of interested to see like uh, specifics about like what you didn't you know per se like. Right, but yeah, and then also again with uh, Mysterio's motivations, like the whole thing with him later wanting to kill Peter Parker, I thought that made no sense either. Well, I mean. You- knew Peter Parker knew uh, cause right, but he, he wasn't going to kill him until after he knew about his plan. Uh, my thinking was, wait, so you, you you supposedly grew a bond with this kid, and he gives you exactly what you want in the Eat of Gosses, and then you want to kill him all of a sudden? What? <laughs> he didn't want him ruining, you know, his plan after that. Yeah, he didn't realize, I mean, I guess he didn't realize the plan until he found the little projector thing, but then he wants to kill him yeah. just for that? But he wasn't going to kill him until after he found that projector thing. I don't know. Like, like it just kind of felt. Yeah. It just still kind of felt like he's just going to kill Peter Parker for sake of killing Peter Parker. Yeah, I didn't really feel that way because, like, even at the bursting, he's like, "Cheers to Peter Parker." Yeah, cheers to Peter Parker, cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's the power of <laughs> that joke is not going away anytime soon. Seriously, like, seriously, you guys can take that damn picture, do whatever you want with it. Let's make that that meme take off. Please. Please. But, uh, but yeah, uh, and hopefully none of you get copyright from the leaked image. Uh, it's not, it's not a leak, what are you talking about? That's true. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, and then, and then like some of the twists, like the ones, um, like I said, there were the ones that worked, some of them didn't work, like, okay, like the whole ones of being like the, his workers being from past to BMC movies, I thought that was cool, that was neat. Yeah. That was clever. I was bringing in those guys. And then, like, you know, and then I see a guy gasp out of me, you know, like, I saw the other day, uh, Obadiah guy gasp, and then, you know, saw the other guy gasp. <laughs> and, the, and they're all getting their, you know, cheers for the him, and cheers for him, yay! <laughs> Man, I, I think I saw a comment saying, like, like they just took, like, that scene's basically, like, they just take the typical uh, villain monologue and turn it into an office party. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That, like I just I thought that comment I was like yeah that's perfectly describes. <laughs> but yeah, and then the ones I felt that didn't work. Um, part, like his illusions are uh, cool, but part of his illusions were um, okay. I just get right to it. Talk about wasting on the I always keep saying internal elementals. Talk about wasting the elementals. I mean, they could do more with them, but I thought they served their purpose for in the story. Like, I mean, I love the whole multi man sequence. Mm-hmm. But what I'm talking about is, um, it's revealed that the elementals are fake and illusion, but that, um, but, like, I was kind of worried that they were going to do that in the movie, and I was thinking, like, like, if they do this in the movie, it was going to make no sense. And they did it, and it made no sense. I mean, I, I like what they do with it, because, I mean, they had had some kind of thing for Mysterio, you know, to be the hero, kind of. I know, but, like, if... If uh, they weren't real, then also doesn't completely make sense because then, the, and then like how much of it was real, how it was not real, and if it was not real, then how were the people able to interact with something that uh, wasn't that fake? Like if it was fake, then if they were interacting with it, then wouldn't they be able to figure out that's fake? Like, I don't know. Like some of the stuff isn't exactly spelled out, but I mean, I don't really know. Or like uh, if Mole Man and Mysterio are destroying cities, and but they're not really destroying cities. What's really happening to the city then? Oh, like the drones are the st- things destroying the stuff. I don't know. Oh wait. Oh, the drones are actually destroying stuff then. Yeah, that, that's the whole purpose for the drones. They project the stuff and then they like also destroy the stuff. Like he's like uh, fake illusions, but real destruction. Oh, so there is actually some fake destruction because I thought some destruction was fake. Because that's what I was wondering was if some destruction was fake, then where's that? Was that like happening to the actual city? 
Like, that was the whole purpose, because he had some drones, but he couldn't really do, like, the big illusion until he got Edith to get all the, you know, like, most of the drones to do, like, major uh, destruction. Okay, that makes more sense. But that wasn't too clear to me, but I guess that makes more sense now. I mean, it wasn't real too clear, because, I mean, I mean, the uh, one guy, uh, he was the guy that actually built all the drones for Tony Stark, but they didn't really have too many of them until they actually got Edith, but even then, I'm the hero. <laughs> but... But yeah, then also, again, like, like, there's also, like, I saw an, uh, analyst video, like, it was Web, okay, it was Webhead. Uh, Webhead was, kind of, was defending, like, a lot of people were already theorizing during the time that the elementals were going to be fake, but he, uh, said, no, they can't be fake because you can clearly see, like, when Hydra Man first comes, Peter's actually hit by water. So, if he's hit by water, where's that water coming from? Like, if, uh, sure. like, if Hydra Man hit him, then shouldn't that just been, like, Hydra Man should, the water should have just gone right through him if it was projection? I also gotta remember, like, uh, they showed, like, the drones were also making, like, the water, like, waves and stuff, because they got, like, sonic, uh... How can they make waves? They're, and they're drones. <laughs> no, they, they can, like, push water with, like, sonic waves. Uh, how can they push water? They're drones. I like, sonic devices on them or something like that. That makes no sense. I don't know. Am I overthinking it? That is actually another thing I keep wondering. Am I overthinking this a little bit? <laughs> I think you are just a bit. I don't know. I don't know. I just kind of feel like they could have made that more sense. Made more sense out of that. I some of this stuff could have been more clear, but... I don't know. But but I also kind of like the elementals. Like, I like how Jermaine likes Sandman, so just kind of feel like they're wasted. I don't know. I didn't even show the wind elemental at all. <laughs> well, didn't they mention him? They mentioned him, but they didn't show him. <laughs> well, well, I guess technically the, like, battle in London was just to be all the elementals put together, but... I don't know. And then, like, and then also multiverse was fake, which... Okay, I guess, and to miss the story, I technically don't mind it, but I think where I take the issues with it is... That was literally the point of the, uh, the second trailer. So, you actually, like, tell the audience in the second trailer, Oh, this movie's gonna have a multiverse! And then you get to the actual movie, and they're like, Ha ha, there's no multiverse! Ha ha, on you! For actually believing it. <laughs> be all technical there is some alternate realities like uh the one where cap actually stayed with peggy like that's an alternate universe you know true but like uh for the multi but it's not like the way mysterio explained it right like also uh, um like i mean i guess it's fine that multiverse didn't work but is it just like i almost actually feel like a mysterio from there earth could have been cool too because, like, one of the theories was if the multiverse was real, like, Mysterio was, like, Peter Parker from another universe. Mm, I don't know. That that would have made, uh, I'm not so sure about that, but, but yeah, I heard of that one before, but, but well, I don't Should know. we talk about the, uh, post-credit scenes? Yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll get to those, like, like, um, because, yeah, I did like those scenes, like, oh, oh okay, like, okay, I would see we'll talk about on that uh, for a second, like okay, that the postcard scenes were good. There was only one criticism I had with that one, which was how's when did when did Mysterio film that? Like when did Mysterio like because like we saw Mysterio die, so like we saw everything what he said. So when did he say the whole like uh, like Peter Parker Spider Man thing? When did when did he film that? I guess he filmed it uh, whenever uh, like Peter. Uh, I guess it was like during one of his illusions uh, when Peter was trying to make his way down the hall. Mm -hmm. Except for he was too busy you know, tormenting uh, Peter, so when would he have time to film that too? Yeah, I remember he's doing his illusions, so he probably he probably have time like as Peter's dealing with his illusions to uh, film it. Uh, but except for uh, you also still hear Mysterio's voice, um, you know, telling Peter the different stuff, so he would have to say that unless he has a pre-recording, which they don't say that. I think you're overthinking it. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I am honestly wondering if I am overthinking it a little bit, which I try not to, like, I mean, you know, I try not to overthink or nitpick, but I don't know. I just kind of feel like it could have made more sense here. Yeah. But, um, but, like, when, but, yeah, when would he have recorded that? Because, like, I mean, I guess the only explanation I can think of is, like, you see Mysterio have a rehearsal, so maybe that's when he did it. I mean, I was just like talking about, like, I love that Mysterio's in a mocap suit. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's, like, realistic, too, but, yeah. I mean, they even have, like, a realistic reason for his fishbowl. It's, like, a heads-up display. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, though. Also, I like to joke, I was sure Marvel did um, I was sure he also doesn't just have a mocap because Marvel wanted to save money on effects. 
And then when he's in the warehouse, he's like, yeah, up to destruction by 100%. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the mocap that was kind of cool. And... Like, you see Mysterio, like, the... The like rendering of his like his him flying around like comes down and like fits over his mocap suit is awesome. Mm -hmm. Mocap suit that was cool. But, um, oh yeah, never negative. Brad, like, uh, like mostly on my positives, I do like Peter Parker's classmates. They're they're fun, uh, fun and all, but that was the one I thought was a bit obnoxious. I mean, I mean, it kind of did get in the way sometimes, but I mean, he kind of needs like a. Uh, you know, like a s some some issue with like him and his class, other than like you know the whole Spiderman thing. Like he needs something for uh, you know, like that. But I don't know. But like just the whole thing. You know, it's applied with Brad, like him being all jealous, and then Ted takes picture of him uh, undressing. Which yeah, that was also dumb. Like like how creepy is that girl? Like you're like you can sit there right in front of him and uh, <laughs> and watch him undress. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? Is Brad the target? Yes. <laughs> Mobile drone strike incoming for his kill. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Nick Fury's like, uh, the first thing you do whenever you get them is you try to kill your class. That kind of reminded me of when Tony Stark in Homecoming said, like, um, I gave you a multi-million suit, and what you did, you hacked it. <laughs> so that's what it kind of reminded me of. Reminded me of. Yeah. But I don't know, like, just the whole Brad subplot was kind of dumb, like, it's just never typical Spider-Man love triangle, which, yeah, where have we seen that before? And then also, yeah. and then, like, also just the whole subplot, just, like, I've seen people saying this, and it's so true. It almost seemed like just something straight out of a Disney Channel soap opera. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I guess they had to put something there for, like, a domestic kind of, uh, uh, for Peter Parker. Uh, I do agree with that teacher, though. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, I'm gonna be a cool teacher here. Uh, don't do that anymore. Yeah, exactly. Also, like, he then lost the photos. Does that mean Peter Parker deleted it? Uh, yeah, pr he pr probably deleted it with, I don't know, MJ might have had something to do with it, because, you know, she kind of knew after that. I don't know. So MJ probably grabbed his phone quickly and deleted it or something? So I'm thinking. I don't know. But, I don't know. Just also didn't like the Brad subplot. That was kind of dumb. Yeah. But. Um, I'm honestly surprised that, uh, uh, Pete, like, the bus driver that, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. gave, uh, Peter Parker was named Dimitri. I'm honestly surprised that he did not, uh, you know, go full chameleon with it. Mm, oh, like saying that Dimitri is chameleon. Yeah, because in the comics, uh, the chameleon's, like, real name's Dimitri, so. Oh, so it might be getting. Um, so, that. You're probably onto something, so that probably means he is Chameleon, he, um, Ch Chameleon, they just didn't reveal him as Chameleon in this movie. Yeah, so I'm honestly surprised that they didn't go, like, full-on an extra credit scene about that, but he's definitely gonna be Chameleon later down the road. Yeah, p probably will, or maybe it's a reference, because there are plenty of Spider-Man movies where, like, they had villains, like, the real names of other villains, like, yeah, like, like Spider-Man 2 and 3, they had Dr. Connors, who that's technically a lizard, and also, um... Um, I think even, like, in the second movie, uh, J. John James' son, he's technically a villain, too, in comics. Yeah, like, um, in Homecoming, they had Matt Gargan as, uh, yeah, you know, exactly. future exactly. scorpion. Exactly, and, um, I think also Amazing Spider-Man 2 had, um, uh, Black Cat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, it, it's probably just adding to the list of, uh, Spider-Man villains that were there, they just weren't the villains yet. That's still, <laughs> that's still another thing I'm wondering, like, doesn't... Okay, it doesn't really bother me. That's just another thing I wondered of why did they set up uh, Scorpion and Homecoming and then they do Mysterio. I'm not complaining, though, because I prefer, prefer Mysterio over Scorpion, but I don't know. That's just still a thing, a thing I still wonder. Yeah. Also, uh, I want to mention this real quick. I'm just saying, there's no way that they're going to kill off Mysterio like that. Mm, that's that's true. Uh, but, like, he is still illusionist, so he's probably like, like okay, but the drone did clear, or Edith, Edith clearly said, uh, said that um, the all the illusions were gone, so maybe it's either he is dead or he's be playing playing dead very good. <laughs> Here's an interesting point that got brought up. When Peter gave Mysterio the glasses, he had to uh, transfer Edith over by authorization. Mysterio didn't authorize a uh, trans, uh, you know, giving it back to Peter, so he could still have control of Edith off somewhere. Mm. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, because then he like like I'm guessing uh, Edith, it's like a switch accounts on uh, Facebook or YouTube or like or like I said, you know, welcome uh, Quentin, and then welcome Peter. So like, and, and maybe it's could have like just like Peter just could have simply just switched account, but the other account still there, Quentin. So yeah, because um, when Peter gave it to Quentin, he was like, um, I like to transfer off or uh, control over to Quentin back. Hmm. Yeah. Which I don't know. Uh, that is still narrow criticism I heard, but I'm not too keen on it. But like, why would Peter Parker trust him that quickly after only like a day? I think it was mostly due if, uh, once uh, he saw uh, Mysterio try on the glasses. He's like, oh man, he looks like Tony Stark, which he kind of did in that moment, to be honest. Yeah, true. Like the the person I went with, like um, I went with two people, and the person next to me said that like like he looks like Tony Stark. Yeah, and then uh, that kind of comes up later with like Peter on the jet with Happy. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, that set, that jet scene was good. I liked that jet scene. That that was the scene that made me want to buy the Lego drone attack set. Yeah, like I love Happy in this movie. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Like we'll get that more when we get the positives. But um, Happy's just looking at him. He's like, uh, and he's like, what? And he's like, nothing. <laughs> but and he's like messing with all the hologram stuff. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, I think that is also another thing I heard is uh, how is Mysterio able to um, rehearse uh, dream, se- uh, you know, like a vision sequence or like not vision, but like um, illusions. But then the next scene, he's just able to do whatever he wants. Uh, I don't know. That's true. I don't know. Unless he did, to, like, create it before for, like, the big attacks, and then, like, he could just do whatever he wanted after that? I guess. Like, so the illusions are controlled by his mind, then? I almost feel like they should have done that. They should have said, like, the illusions are somehow controlled by his mind. <laughs> like, I mean, would that, would that have made more or less sense than what we got? I mean, this, the version we got is kind of more realistic, That's but true. I don't know. That's true. Which I, I do like it that they try to make it more realistic. Uh-oh. But yeah, so it did make like a um, Far From Home Concerns video before seeing the movie. I do feel like some of my concerns ended up being valid. Like I was I was worried about uh, Multiverse. That ended up being valid. Semi, semi-valid semi with Mysterio. Because like like he's cool villain with his illusions and all, but then his motivation doesn't quite make sense. and doesn't quite add up. Like, uh, for me personally, I liked it. Mm, right. Wait, that, that's good. That's fine. It's called Opinions. And then, I mean, that's the great thing about movies. They're going to be such a wide diversity of opinions. Right. I think the only problem is a lot of people agree with you. So I, I don't see, like, I'm the one odd one out here, you know? <laughs> you know, that awkward moment where, like, you know, everyone's saying, oh, this movie's great. And the other person, I was like, it was all right. <laughs> I mean, I was kind of the opposite way with uh, Ant Man and the Watch. People were like, it's okay. And I was like, man, what are you talking about? This is great. <laughs> and suppose, like, I might be a minority here, but like I feel like the action was good, but also somehow like 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 it was good, but somehow felt too big for Spider-Man to me. I don't know if that makes any sense. I thought the action was you know good. I mean, I thought it was kind of unique with like uh, you know him uh, third act with drones and stuff. I thought that was pretty unique. Yeah. Okay. I do like the final act. Like that's probably the best action scene in the movie. I think. I, I think the uh, whole illusion sequence is the best of the movie, though. Well, is that really an action sequence, though? Consider an action sequence. Uh, well, like, sequence, but maybe not action sequence. Uh. But, but I don't know. Like, I, I like the action sequences. I just wonder if it might be a tad too big for Spider-Man. You don't know. I mean, I think he kind of needed it, because uh, I think it's kind of annoying how he's like, well, I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Uh, that's what he's supposed to be. It's kind of annoying when he keeps saying, we're, oh, I can't do that because I just want to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Right, but also in his core, that's kind of what he is. He's a more smaller scale superhero, so then all of a sudden he gets big scale action. I don't know. I think that's just... Yeah, that's I think that's... Callum, Nick Fury says it's time to step up. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, and spoilers, but, but, but we're on spoilers anyway, so... Yeah. But I don't know. I, maybe that's just my spider, spider nerd I mentioned earlier coming in. But yeah, like, I think with the concerns, like, I think my concerns that ended up being valid were, like, I think I was worried about NJ, that that ended up being fine, like, NJ was fine, so that ended up not being valid. Too many villains, that ended up not being valid. Well, sort of. Uh, but, um, Mysterio, a little bit valid, and then, like, Multiverse, definitely valid. 
Um, and then, oh yeah, next Iron Man, that was another concern I had. That, that was fine. But he, he, because as Happy says, uh, nobody can live with Iron Man, not even Tony. Mm. And, and until in the next scene, you literally uh, have him make his own sound suit and listen to music like Iron Man. Just saying. But yeah, kind of feel like with my concerns, like I think I had like six of them, maybe like half of them end up being valid. I, I think. And then, like, Mysterio, like, um, like, technically as a villain, he's good, like, with illusions and all, and then his motivation doesn't quite hold up, like, like, also, like, with, with Peter Parker, like, he doesn't want to kill Peter Parker, I think it's also kind of the final act, he doesn't mind killing other people, too, so he goes from, um, I'm just doing this, uh, because I just want to be a hero, and better than Toy Stark, to, uh, I want to kill Peter Parker and other people, like, whoa! Well, he wants to do what he can, you know, to make himself look like the hero. I don't know. I don't know, like, some things don't add up to me. And then, again, Multiverse thought that, like, 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 it's alright that they didn't have, Multiverse wasn't real, but at the same time, I also felt like, like, then that kind of makes the trailers misleading now. Mm, I don't know, the marketing was kind of weak there. Right. I like, I like the teaser trailer and then the, that second trailer, like, especially after the movie, that second trailer isn't that good. <laughs> like, so, some of you were saying, like, you know, the movie could have been a lot bigger if they would have, you know, kind of showed off, you know, some stuff to, more, like, some more interesting stuff to draw people in. Like the illusion sequence? I don't think they should have showed that, but, like, you know, some other stuff that could have, you know, teased a little bit in the trailers, you know, try to bring some uh, more mainstream people in to watch it. Like what? Well, uh, like, you know, they could have included a little bit of the, uh... You know, like the final battle, maybe a little bit of the illusion sequence, but not too much. And, you know, just, uh, they could have included more of the, like, Molten Man kind of stuff, I think. Mm -hmm. Except for they did have a final battle in Molten Man stuff. Yeah, but I thought they could have included a little bit more of the trailers and, you know, some of the, uh, you know, other cooler stuff in the movie. I don't know. The trailers do seem misleading now, though. Uh, but... I don't know. I guess those are most of my criticisms. I'm not exactly sure if they're very valid or not. Like, maybe I'm overthinking it, but I don't know. I just think some of the stuff didn't really add up. I mean, some of the stuff isn't, like, you know, spelled out all the way, but, you uh, know, I thought it made sense for me at least. Oh, yeah, and Brad was dumb. <laughs> See, my, my main problem with it is, you know, just mostly that first act. Mm, which, which, okay, yeah, getting positive, I actually kind of liked that first act, because that first act had a lot of the high school stuff from Homecoming that I liked. And, and, so and... Are we getting into positives now? Yeah, until I think of some other negatives. Like, I don't know, who knows if some other negatives might come in. And also, okay, maybe also note, like, who knows, like, I've only seen the movie once, so I kind of feel like, I almost feel like it might be one of those movies where, like, maybe I wouldn't really like it on first watch, and then maybe once I rewatch it, I'll probably like it more. Yeah, I kind of like it a little bit more in my second watching, my right. second viewing. So, so who knows? Maybe I'm just more mixed feelings on it now, but then maybe who knows? Man, maybe by the end of this year I'll go like, oh no, this movie's great. I've changed my mind. Yeah. Some of like my positives is uh, I love the whole sequence in Prague with Molten Man. Mm, yeah. Oh, is that the one with the carnival? Yeah. Yeah, the carnival one's good. And like, uh... You know, the whole third act I did really like, and, you know, I love Mysterio. Um, oh, when, one thing I kind of find sweet is uh, the first person, uh, Peter, uh, thanks to Kyle, whatever, you know, he's in trouble, and the Netherlands is happy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and happy was good. And then happy was, you know, concerned about Peter whenever he showed him. He's like, what's going on, Peter? Yep. Yep, happy was great. Like, my, this, yeah. could, can this possibly be happy's best movie? I think it's John Favreau's best performance in these movies. Mm, yeah, and plus also he's kind of he's kind of in a way the new actual mentor to Peter. I mean, I guess Nick Fury's supposed to be that, but except for yeah, we'll get back to that later. But um, yeah, that whole jet sequence I absolutely loved. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Like has that that nice motivational talk, and then like I I kind of feel like I see that's where I actually started like the movie a little bit more. Well, okay, like. Like, the, I, I do still enjoy parts of the movie, but then it's, like, where the, have the Mysterio twist that I started going, like, what? But, yeah, Happy was good. Oh, yeah, definitely a big high positive. Okay, now I'm going to go to post-credit scenes. J.K. Simmons back, baby! Woo! Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I think I think I was like I think I just saw that. I was like like J. Jonah Jameson came, and came out. Um, I was like, you know, I was still cheering, and then I was like, I'm wondering like, is that J.K. Simmons? Is that J.K. Simmons? And I, like, I was looking at cast list and saw. I was looking for it. Saw J.K. Simmons. And I like I just yelled in the theater. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the poor people behind me, but. That's another positive for me. I'm really interested to see where, you know, they're taking the next Spider-Man movie in the future of the MCU. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think I see some people complain about that post-credit scene though, saying like like it's missed potential to have um, Spider-Man reveal all his identity that soon because it's part of Spider-Man's character to have his identity a secret. But now they've uh, wasted potential by uh, revealing it too soon. But honestly, just thought it's fine. Like. You know, one thing that somebody pointed out, I was like, yeah, uh, people were saying, like, you know, Mysterio is, like, you know, pretty villainous now because, you know, even after quote-unquote death, uh, you know, he stole away, you know, uh, Peter's moment, you know, for his identity. Like, he stole that away from Peter. Like, he stole away his I am Iron Man moment from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I can kind of see that. Oh, yeah, did we talk about the scroll part yet? I think so. We might have, so sorry to viewers if we did, but yeah, so Nick Fury was, uh, was a scroll the whole time. Okay, not, 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 but yeah, the whole time in the movie. Amory Hill. Amory Hill, yeah. And, like, wait, was that, was that scroll tell us, whole, uh, was that, uh, was that scroll Nick Fury the whole time, or was it actually Nick Fury? I don't know. Oh, I think the entire Far From Home movie, it was, a uh, Talos and his wife disguised, but... Um, I think the director of Far From Home confirmed that it was the real Nick Fury at, you know, the funeral at, okay, that's good. Uh, at the end of Endgame. Okay, that's good, because I saw some people wondering about that. Uh, was it actually Telos at the funeral? No, it was it was uh, Nick Fury. That's good. Yeah. And... Which, I mean, I did, I did kind of like the reveal, because there was, like, hints throughout the entire movie. He's like, uh, Mr. Beck isn't from your world. That's almost another reason why I, like, if I did see the movie again in the theater, that can be a good reason why so then i can just watch uh see see how nick fury holds up in the movie after i know that he's not nick fury yeah well even like the first one to me i was like why do you say your world mm. but that was a little weird and then like i don't know just something about nick fury and maria hill i don't know something throughout the entire movie was just a little off for me and now exactly. you know after i saw that i was like ah oh. that makes more sense but he he was still funny though. Like like this, I think the scene I probably left out the most was uh, the Nick Fury and the Peter Parker <laughs> scene. Like everyone kept um, coming in. Oh yeah! If another person walks in that door, yes, like, we're gonna have another funeral. <laughs> yes, that's probably. He's about ready to shoot the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I see. It would have been almost funny if he shot the teacher. <laughs> Like two people passing out the floor of the door to the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've actually saw, saw a few parody saw, uh, few parody videos where I like to say some people might have gotten a little crazy if <laughs> Nick Fury's shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little trigger happy. Yeah. <laughs> also like it that it was Talos. Oh yeah, I love uh, ben, I love my, uh, me some Ben Mendelsohn in a movie. Mm -hmm. Wow, how much did they pay Mendelsohn just to show up in uh, for only like two minutes in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> the easiest money he ever made. <laughs> and unless they unless they did it during the same time when they filmed Captain Marvel, then I guess that would make more sense. Then it would be part of his Captain Marvel paycheck. I feel like they probably, you know, uh filmed it while they were doing that. Probably, yeah. But um But yeah, I do like those Telos because I did like Telos and uh Cat Marvel, he's probably one of my favorite parts. So oh, yeah. I think and, you know the uh, Oh, good. I think I might have said that in the Cat Marvel podcast, but I'm not sure. But I did like Telos and the scroll. I think I might have said I liked the scrolls, but when I say that, I mean Telos. I mean, I, I like his character. He's, you know, definitely got a personality. Mm hmm. But. The whole, like, after credit scene is, like, setting up a sword from the comics. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that's what some people are saying. Like, basi basically, um, Secret Invasion in reverse. That's pretty much, uh, shield, but in space. Mm hmm. And yeah, it looks like Nick Fury's doing something in space, and possibly the scrolls are working for him. So, yeah. And there's a interesting theory I heard of surrounding Maria Hill. Uh, I think me and you might have talked about earlier uh, off the podcast, but I think about making a whole separate video on that. Mm -hmm. Or I think I'm I think I might remember us talking about that. And I was saying, yeah, it really makes sense because um, Maria Hill, like, they haven't done too much of a character anyway, so I don't see too many people arguing over that. 
Yeah. But, like, seriously, like, she's been around since 2012, and, yeah, try to name one thing about her character. But, yeah, uh, Scrolls working for Fury, maybe, maybe could possibly set up Cat Marvel 2, I see some people saying. Yeah, and it kind of makes me wonder, uh, Cat Marvel got anything to do with, uh, you know, Nick Fury doing all that, or... Maybe. Oh, yeah, also a lot of people wondering, like, also, like, for when Nick Fury dusted in Infinity War, could have that been tell that really got dusted? Yeah, I don't think so. I think he started really doing that after Endgame, uh, you know, after the whole dusting, you know, he kind of wanted an extra layer of defense, uh, you know, for the whole galaxy, really. Mm. And that's why he created Sword. Mm, right. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Like, maybe if, like, um... Oh, wait, you're saying, like, like after he got dusted, he probably did that then? Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. I'm, sure, I'm, I'm hoping they'll um, talk about it in a future movie, explain it a little more. Yeah, because, I mean, it was, a, it was kind of a little out of nowhere, but he, you can tell they're trying to set up something, but they didn't go too deep into it. Right. Oh, yeah, also, like, I'm also proud to say this is also finally a Marvel movie where I only got one thing spoiled for me. Everything else I, I didn't know, so that was good. I don't think I've got spoiled, like, any, for any Marvel movie. Alright. I think it was the same thing of Endgame, where, like, um, I think it sadly was kind of spoiled for me at Tony Stark died. <laughs> so. The only movie I can really remember, like, a spoiler uh, getting spoiled for me was, uh, Force Awakens. Oh. Oh, I think I can guess what that spoiler was. Um. Yeah, maybe you should also do a Star Wars podcast, uh, when that comes out. Like, maybe you can talk about Force Awakens and Last Jedi when that comes out. Oh, yeah, because I, I think everybody's got interesting views on The Last Jedi. Yeah, for sure. But, um, I, have, I haven't actually seen it all the way through, so don't at me. Shit, it's on Netflix. Mm. There you go, keep that in mind. But, and I think, and I think actually I am slowly, like, um, I am slowly starting to like the movie a little bit more as we talk, so. And I feel like you'll probably like it better uh, whenever you watch it again, uh, whenever that'll be. The movie's just confusing to me. It's, it's good, but confusing out of ten. And there's some movies like that where I'm like, I don't really know how I feel about this, because I was confused about some stuff, and... Wait, it's also weird, because I'm usually the guy where, like, everyone's, everyone, you know, like, some people I know watch a Marvel movie and they're confused, and I'm the person that I was like, like, oh, this is actually what it is. It's this, 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 and then I guess it's the finally the one Marvel movie that I'm like... It finally got to me. <laughs> like that, like that nightmare uh, sequence that's straight out of the comics. Or at least, I've, yeah. Oh my god, that was amazing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that creepy uh, Iron Man. And like you can see, like a spider crawled out of his uh, yeah. the yeah. eye hole of his skull. Man, imagine all the seven-year-olds that went to saw, see this. <laughs> like. You can tell Marvel's uh, starting to get a little bit more comfortable and you got, kind of get a little bit more risky. Mm, yeah. Well, they, that's kind of all... Oh, Shazam. Mm, well, they also, that's pretty much all Phase 2 was. was uh, Phase 2 was um, kind of the, the, you know, the taking risk phase. And then they kind of, you know, went back into the uh, comfort hole and now they're kind of, you know, stepping a couple toes out. Mm, but, and then... Um, Oh yeah, and I think you were saying that uh, Iron Man is like uh, Marvel Zombies. Yeah, like that, that's kind of a reference to Marvel Zombies, which if you, if you don't know, it's pretty much a comic. Uh, don't get into like, it; it's effed up. <laughs> that's all you need to know. <laughs> don't get into it. It's like a Marvel universe where the hero there's like a zombie outbreak and heroes turn into zombies, and you know. I don't know. I don't... It's really weird, but not a fan. <laughs> I think I think that wasn't their thing. Was um, you had. Oh, yep, like you, like you said off-air, um, I just remember what I was going to say, but, and then I'll probably forget about it in a minute, but, yeah, anyways, um, yep, I just forgot about it again, <laughs> ah. oh, oh, and remembered again, ah, anyways, um, what was I going to say, nah, but, oh yeah, uh, with the Nick Fury thing, real quick, um, I think before this you were reading, um, a rumor list, uh, like, it was like a, um, like, fake rumor, uh, post credit scene where, like, Nick Fury was chameleon, you were close. <laughs> I mean, he did, uh, he was, uh, disguised Nick Fury. Right, so, I guess, technically, you were close. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't, uh, as good as, uh, Captain Marvel Scrolls, but... Yeah, but, hey, I guess that's prediction number two for you. 
but yeah, and then with Marvel Zombies, I think that also like that was also another one where like um, that her, like heard it from you and also heard it from some videos of like also a rumored one where like there's gonna be illusion of all of his uh, students as uh, zombies. And I was thinking, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> I think that might be a deleted scene because, like, the rumor was, like, he'd be walking down, like, an empty hallway of a school, and during the whole illusion sequence, there is, like, a shot of, like, him standing in the hallway of a school. Mm, I don't know. So that might be a deleted scene. Uh, I know. I just, I just not really into Marvel Zombies. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. It's dumb. It's dumb and effed up. I love like the it. illusion sequence. Uh, he tries to punch him in series, but uh, punches, like, a... Uh, 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 pillar. Uh, my only question about the train sequence is probably more of a nitpick, right? but like in that illusion sequence, was that real train that he get and got hit by? And if it is, how is he still alive? That was a real train. And how is he still alive? I mean, he's freaking Spider Man. No, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I guess Peter Parker is strong, but he ain't that strong. He ain't a Wolverine. Yeah. So how is he still alive after that? I know he's at least got a couple broken bones. I don't know. Oh, I just thought of that. Like, Yuzi Hishi, they do, um, they have the fans write the Spider-Man Hishi. If they do that for Far From Home, I should totally write that as a comment, saying, like, alternate ending, um, where, like, where, like, he gets hit by the train and dies. <laughs> Didn't sit war Hishi in the endgame Hishi. Uh, yeah. That and have a scene of Mysterio going, my villain pub going, my plan makes no sense. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of my other favorite moments of the illusion sequence is, uh, I like how it's, like, layered, like, he, 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 like, makes himself look like he died, like, in real life, but, it's, you know, he really didn't. Mm. Oh, yeah, and also the Nick Fury gang shot. I, I was like, whoa, was that Nick Fury or not? Uh, like, I mean, his illusions are layered, like, there's, like, the whole fantasy type of illusion, then there's, like, a realistic, you know, illusion, illusions that's kind of stacked on top of that. Right, and then the trippy illusions where, like, you have a bunch of Spider-Man talking, uh, attacking him and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah, and I think I also saw a video trying to point out. I think it was also an illusion sequence or something where like there's like a moon and then the moon turns into his globe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like a he's like stuck inside a mysterious dome that's like a snow globe. Yeah, that was cool. And then I love seeing like the army of mysterious marching just like straight out of the comics. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely cool to get. I honestly wish we had more illusion scenes in the movie, like. Like, I did, like, when we get to the final act, I do like the final act, but, um, but I do kind of wish we could have had, like, uh, Mysterio versus Spider-Man, like, with illusions and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I did think the final act was, you know, unique, because, uh, you know, I kind of like unique final battles, uh, but I wish there was, like, a whole other trippy illusion sequence near the end. I do kind of wish there were more illusion stuff, but... I mean, yeah, I guess... It was a great, like, sequence, though. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, the fight on the bridge, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the whole fight in the drones thing, I, I did like, but, I don't know, it's kind of just like a, you know, I just wish it was more Mysterio and yeah, Luigi kind of stuff with it. Okay, okay, decent, that's probably a better word for it. The, the, the fight on the bridge was decent. Yeah. I think the part I liked was when he was like, he was like, it's fake, it's fake, and then he, like, he was like, inside the illusion. Oh, yeah. Like, that was cool. Like, what Mysterio said when he... You know, uh, after he died, it's true, uh, people, uh, pretty much believe anything these days. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, and... to believe. Oh, yeah, and then, yeah, um, do you think he's dead? There's no way that he's gonna be dead after, you know, there's no way he's dead. Right, well, except for, um, Edith clearly said, um, that, um, all the illusions are gone, so it probably means if he's not dead, he's just playing dead then, I guess. I see it in two ways. Think about it this way. When Peter gave Mysterio the Edith glasses, he had a transfer over control to Quentin Beck. Quentin Beck didn't transfer back control to Peter Parker, so maybe, you know, he used Edith to trick Parker, Peter Parker. Or the second way I look at it is uh, instead of using visual effects, uh, like, you know, most of the movie, this time he used practical effects. Mm, I guess. Something like that. I'm just saying, there's no way he's dead, because, you know, so many links, uh, they already set up, you know, uh, so far two, or I guess three Count Mysterio members of the Sinister Six. I'm just saying, there's no way that they're not going to keep him around for that, because he's one of the OG members of Sinister Six. Yeah. Oh, hang on. I, I did hear an interesting theory uh, for, like, uh, the setup for, like, the third Spider-Man movie. Though. 
you know, since everybody, you know, now since Mysterio and the Daily Bugle made everybody think Spider-Man's bad, uh, you know, the, New York's going to, you know, want a super, like a, a quote-unquote superhero team to take down Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. So it might be like the Spectacular Six or something like that. Oh, yeah, that could be interesting. I mean, that's kind of where I think they're going with it, which, I mean, that could be really interesting. Mm-hmm. Where people think the Sinister Six are actually, you know, the good guys. Mm-hmm. Sad, though, well, that... Peter it's... get back his good reputation, I think. Yeah. Or that it would probably just do, like, what they did with uh, this movie, which was, you know, they made a whole big deal about Aunt May, you know, find out they Spider-Man, and then they just drop it. So that, I wouldn't be surprised if that's also what they do for the next one as well, where, like, they just make it a big deal, and, they just, and it's, like, in the beginning of the next movie, he's like, like, oh, never mind, I just got it all worked out. <laughs> I, I think it's funny that uh, Far From Home and Homecoming both uh, end with the F-bomb, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice that he so said... What's the third one end with? Third one ends with a full F bomb. No, <laughs> bad idea. Bad idea. No, no. Third one needs Samuel Jackson doing it. This yes. Time. Well, okay. He already did it with uh, Infinity War, but true, true. Captain Marvel, mother flurkin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that was also an air joke I had a lot of my friends, which was uh, it would have been funny if this movie started with like a flashback of uh, Ant May going. <laughs> It's funny if uh, you see like Nick Fury uh, blip back and he says the uh, oh. <laughs> other part of the word. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it would just be fun. I, find, it, like, I honestly think they probably could make an entire like Netflix series or m- mini movie on the blip. Honestly. I know like on, uh, this is kind of like that, but uh, on Disney Plus they're doing like Marvel What If uh, series. Mm. Yes, I can't wait for that. Yeah, that's... You know, that's going to be really good, I hope, right. at least. Like, like, that's honestly a Marvel show I'm actually looking forward to most. Like, like, okay, Bucky and Falcon also sound interesting, but honestly, what if is the one that sounds the most unique to me? I'm just saying WandaVision has a really stupid name. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, getting sidetracked again. Sorry, people. <laughs> Should be called the Sidetrack Podcast. <laughs> but, <laughs> but... It's kind of like the MGF podcast where they're saying, like, MGF podcast is a show of temporary names. So I keep teasing. Uh, I think I teased one. It should be called Temporary Name Podcast. <laughs> uh, they also had a lot of technical difficulties. So that was another one that they actually laughed at, which was uh, Technical Difficulties Podcast with Ross and Tate. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> sidetrack again. Sidetrack again. <clears throat> but, um, um, a lot of people were bashing the first act. I actually kind of liked the first act. For me, really, the only thing is, uh, I, I don't know, is the Hydra Man stuff part of the first act? Mm, I suppose technically. I mean, that was really, I just wish that fight would have went on a little longer if they'd done a little something else with it. But I don't know, some of the high schooler stuff just kind of drug on for me, at least. Mm. Especially with second viewing. Yeah. Funny though, like I saw like the memorial part at the beginning, I was like, what? And then like it cut to the uh, high school news, I was like, oh. Getting images. What? <laughs> um, oh yeah, and then also like I guess the whole thing of like attacking um, uh, the Sandman talking, the Mysterio coming in. Like I think that was like I sadly didn't get to see it, but I do know that that was one of the scenes that played after Avengers Endgame release. So I guess that really was the opening scene the whole time. So interesting. Remember, are you uh, you mean uh, Avengers Endgame cash trap? <laughs> Re-release, but yeah. Well, I suppose not even re-release, but hey, don't you want to get it? Beat Avatar. <laughs> yes, but I think it included something more of a draw than that unfinished lead scene. I don't know, but it did help though. I think it did help him get like I think it's like extra ten million, so it helped. Um, but yeah, the the memorial. But I mean, I, at least the high schoolers were trying. <laughs> Yeah, with a Celine Dion song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um... Oh, yeah, it was also funny. A lot of, like... Like, some people didn't like the, the blip behind jokes because they were saying, like, oh, I'm not ready to laugh at Endgame yet, but some of them are actually kind of funny. And when the, the band disappears and then they pop back yes. in the basketball game. <laughs> yeah, or the the one I liked was... Uh, was um, I came back and my, uh, my younger brother is older than me. Not fair. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, when Flash is on the plane, he's drinking a... Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. He's not he's legally... Uh, he's technically he's 16. Lived, so he's technically not uh, 21. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then he gets the, the drink taken away from him. Hey! Yeah. 
Flash was the funniest part in this. Just made me wonder though, like, if that really did happen, would they have to put like something on like all legal documentation saying blipped or something like that? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, honestly, I, do, I kind of hope they keep exploring the blip throughout the MCU, actually. Hopefully this is not the only movie, because I kind of feel like they can explore it more. <laughs> Ant-Man was like, uh, yeah, I bolted back into my apartment, and they thought I was a ghost. <laughs> but, oh, that's probably where it came from. Like, if Ant-Man actually said in Endgame, that's probably where it came from. Yeah, blip beard. <laughs> and amazing that yeah, John Favreau's technically been able to be around this long. <laughs> And then, you know, back in black. Men in black reference, and you haven't seen Men in Black. <laughs> and, um, oh yeah, that jet scene was great too, yeah. Him making the suit himself. Yeah, but that, that could have been really cheesy, though. That could have been like, hey, you'll never be Iron Man, but you're Spider Man. But that could have been really cheesy, but I'm glad they did not go that way. <laughs> I see, I, I don't say like, the, yeah, that would have been cheesy, that almost could have been better. <laughs> No, you're not Iron Man. But you're Spider-Man. Spider -Man. <laughs> you're the amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> the airplane scene is definitely a good, like, like you know, there's that moment in Spider-Man movie where, like, Peter realizes he's messed up and then he gets to be motivated, so that's that's kind of what the airplane scene was to me. Oh, yeah. Like, like they also kind of have a moment like that in Homecoming, you know, where it's, um, you, you know, like when he's under the rubble and all. Uh, I like the part when uh, Happy Hogan calls Nick Fury. He's like, oh, yeah, we found the surfboard, and um, I didn't know your surfer looks can be deceiving. <laughs> and then later, uh, uh, Nick Fury Talos is like, uh, uh, really on the nose there, ain't it? <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah, that, that jet scene was the scene that made me want to buy the Lego set, so. I'm definitely going to have to get that one. Yeah, especially after that scene. Right. And, um... Trying to think some other scenes. Hydra Man attack was a pretty good scene. Actually, now thinking of it. Um, I mean, it kind of used a little bit more fighting because it was kind of more like a chase. And then Peter was just kind of stuck with uh, the destruction part of it. Right. But, I, mean, I, I liked it. I mean, I thought Hydra... You know, I'm glad to see Hydra Man, you know, kind of come to the big screen. And, you know, they, they and even give uh, his I, comic book origins a shout-out movie. And I, I don't count it. I don't count... I'm, I don't count this. Like, like... He was Hydra Man, but he wasn't really Hydra Man, so uh, to me it doesn't count. Yeah, but I, I did like how they even referenced like his comic book origins, uh, or they're like, uh, yeah, the Sailor uh, Generator gave him hydroelectric powers. Mm -hmm. I can't, kind of hope that one day we can get a Spider Man movie with a, re uh, with a real Hydra Man, then they can really do Hydra Man justice. <laughs> He comes and he's a uh, Matt Mysterio for still his likeness. Yes, yes, then do it, do it, do it. Spider Man 4. And then, and then like, the whole movie's just uh, Mysterio and Hydra Man in a court case. Yes. <laughs> Is it weird if I would actually watch that? I like this. <laughs> Spider Man uh, 3, home from court. <laughs> court summons. <laughs> Oh yeah, that is an joke I've seen. Spider-Man three, Spider-Man three is gonna be called Spider-Man Homeless confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw a joke. Uh, it was like, uh, uh, you know how that uh, Annabelle movie is called Annabelle Comes Home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, uh, yeah, I can see why Spider-Man's far from home. <laughs> yeah. And they literally came out like three weeks ago. Yeah, so true. So true. <laughs> and also, Chucky came out too. So. <laughs> I still need to watch that. I don't know, but especially in this movie when, uh, like, he meets with Nick Fury, I don't know, it just, like, really irritated me. Mm, well, also at the same time, like, you, you kind of can, un I, honestly, I honestly can see where he's coming from, because, like, like, he just a, um, he's just a kid, he got dusted for uh, five um, years, and then just to see his man and tour die, and then he just he's just ready to t take a break, and because he's all stressed out, and you know also people asking him about being next Tony Stark, and he just wants to take a break and go on vacation, and then all of a sudden Nick uh, Fury wants him to um, go on a secret mission, like that could be that could be I a mean, bit much for him. Like I don't see. It's I, just I, like Nick Fury said, are you going to step up? Uh. I don't know. Like, I mean, Tony's dead now. I mean, he needs to step up. Right, and, but, but you, you know, you're gonna let people die. Right, but you, you, you gotta give him some time too. Like, like you can't do it just that quickly. Had plenty of time though. I know. Well, we don't know how long this takes place after Endgame, but 
or like you know, like after the movie, uh, movie and game, you know. I mean, you got. Well, I think it takes place like six months, maybe. It's like around six months, I think. Oh yeah, but that is one positive I got to get about the movies. I do generally feel bad for Peter Parker, and I think that's good. So. Yeah, but I will say the whole Molten Man scene in Prague is a lot better than the Hydra Man scene mm-hmm. in uh, in us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know, D- debatable, but Night Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> And there's another joke I thought of, I just forgot about it. Like, I think there's only a few jokes that I actually remember, and then some of them I just kind of forgot about. <laughs> like, that's kind of the humor for me. Like, some of them I are do good. like the joke uh, when he gets out of uh, the prison cell, he's like, the guard's wearing the, the night monkey mask, and he's like, yeah, night monkey, on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what was, what was he doing in that jail? Well, that's after he got uh, hit by the train. They filmed him in the train yard or whatever, so they arrested him. Oh. Thanks, Mysterio. <laughs> uh, but, um, see, trying to think of some other things. MJ is definitely better in this. Yeah, like, I, I like her character a lot in this. Right, like, in, in Homecoming, she was fine, but she was kind of the, oh, I'm going to be a teenager here, please leave me alone, and then she's a little better here. Uh, I, do, I do like her. Like, her character's definitely more unique than, like, uh, it's different than, like, you know, the Sam Raimi trilogy, MJ. And, uh, and Amazing Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy. I don't know. But, and, um, and, uh, her, him and Liz. No neck snapping in this movie. <laughs> that is a little joke I like to have, is, like, there's... There's uh, four snaps here. The Thanos uh, snap, uh, the, the Thanos snap, the Hulk snap, the Tony snap, and the Superman snap. <laughs> Triggered. But, um... And, oh yeah, also, um, I do feel like, like, speaking of Amazing Spider-Man, like, I feel like with Amazing Spider-Man, like, with some of the chemistry scenes with Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy, they're trying to make it awkward, um, but I kind of feel like with MJ and Peter here, they did, they made the chemistry awkward in a good way, where, like, it's right, more realistic. Right, yeah, right, like, it's awkward, but it's in a charming and funny way, while, while in Amazing Spider-Man, uh, it was awkward in a kind of, to be honest, cringy way. <laughs> I feel like MJ's character in this movie is, like, a more relatable character, like, like it's a lot of relatable to, like, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Right, like, like that's what I mean. Like, like Far From Home, it's, it's, um, it's, you look pretty, too. You know, that's awkward, but funny. But then we get to meet Spider-Man, so you, uh, 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 <laughs> uh you know, so you want to, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's still, that's still a nerd line that bothers me in Amazing Spider-Man <laughs> of, uh, go sleep at me. I can't go sleep. Who wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote that? Needs to be fired. <laughs> like, go... Oh, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, I know we kind of talked about the whole f- the Flash thing earlier with, like, his parents or whatever. Uh, yeah, what was going on with his parents? Like some, like the person I went, uh, like I went with my uh, sister and a friend of mine, and like my sister uh, saw like when his parents didn't show up. And I was like, oh, I was just confused. Like what? Like was his parents supposed to show up? Like also they didn't mention anything about Tony's Tony's parents. So well, something uh, or, or, I heard the other day is or Flash's well, parents. I'm sorry, I, I, was, I said Tony because that's 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 the actor's name. You know, so sorry about that. Oh yeah. Well, like, I heard this the other day, and I was like, what? But, like, I mean, in the movie, like, you can tell, like, his family's rich and all. Mm-hmm. Um, well, some people were saying, what if, you know, Flash isn't his real name? Like, his last name ain't Thompson. It's his real name. Flash is just a nickname. His real name's Harry Osborne. Mm. Mm. It, you know, his mom could be, like, the Green Goblin or his dad or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm, and, you know, like, his parents could be too busy working on the Green Goblin experiment or whatever. Mm. The only problem with that, though, is that, um, is that Terry and Peter are supposed to be best friends, and obviously they're not really best friends, but... Uh, I mean, I can kind of find an interesting angle, but, I mean, you know, people kind of get too, you know, some people get really angry when it's not like the comics, but sometimes change is a good thing, especially if it's done all right. I don't know. Like, I think that's me with with Spider-Man. Like, again, I studied Spider-Man comics, so I can be kind of picky with how uh, they can handle Spider-Man, but, like, I think it's all, in de- it depends on how they do it. 
So like, yeah. it's like they could do that, and they could probably make it work, but also they can also do it and make it feel lazy. So. No, no, it, it, I just because I mean that's the really only possible solution. I see them going with anywhere with that. Because why would you set it up if they're not going to go anywhere with it? Unless they're going to do something else, like you know later in the movie or in the third movie where you know Peter feels sorry for Flash or something like that. I don't know. It basically would be reverse. Because I mean they gotta be set up for something. It'd be reverse of Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> but um, but I don't know, but. It's, um, you made me forget what I was gonna say again. <laughs> Sorry, you're fine. <laughs> but um, I just got so much to say about certain scenes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, also like, um, Flash didn't seem as much of a bully in this. <laughs> Peter knocks him out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just knock out Flash. <laughs> I really be laughing. <laughs> well, it's also because well, that's good. He was taking Edith, so he, he kind of had it coming. Nice glasses, Parker. Right. <laughs> Flash, give me this back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. That's probably one of the only scenes where he was actually kind of being a bully. But, but I mean, he even ended up being a help leader because um, looked like um, Flash was becoming a he was trying to become like a streamer or something, and they actually got help from him on a stream, you know, find out where Mysterio was. So. I waste my life just watching my life for other people's enjoyment. Actually, we got, um, uh, Spider-Man used your help for that. He was like, wait, what? I don't really follow me. <laughs> oh, yeah, also, I was trying to see, though, uh, see there, like, um, what was he last stream? I'm guessing it was Instagram. Okay, it kind of looked like an Instagram stream. Stream. Yeah, it would probably be Instagram if, you know, it was real. Right, it can, like, it kind of looked like, like... Like, I almost wish it was YouTube, but you know, like, I was looking at the chat screen and it didn't look like it was YouTube. It looked like it was probably Instagram. Yeah, that or some uh, website they just made up. Mm, something like that. But probably Instagram. Or her. But, I mean, I think that's really the only two sites you can stream on, really. It's just YouTube and Instagram. Oh, and um, and uh, Twitch. Facebook. Oh, and, okay. oh, yeah, Facebook. Yeah, that's true. But Combination of all of those, really. Yep. <laughs> It's the Snap, uh, Facebook, Twitch. Yeah, it's funny Flash went full, um, um, kind of like the kid from Shazam, where he just gives a, he, uh, he, he starts a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, uh, <laughs> hang on, I'm trying to Okay. His name's Captain Sprinkle Fingers. <laughs> Yeah, I was just thinking about all the different names uh, he gives Shazam in the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's the only one I can remember, actually. I don't know. Like, I'll probably start remembering once I start. Like, by the next podcast, I'll probably will, because probably by the next podcast, I'll be owning that on Blu-ray, so. Let's see, trying to think of some other things. Um, was kind of good when Mysterio grew a bond, even though he's basically a con artist, but that was good. Well, Could have been a little better, but, like, there, like obviously, like there were some other movies that did it better, but. And then, like, after he gets the glass, he's like, see, was that so hard? <laughs> I don't know. I guess he's a good manipulator. Uh, but, I don't know, they could have grown that bond a little more. Like, say, Spider-Man 2 probably did it better. Spider-Man 1 and 2, maybe, okay, maybe not quite Amazing Spider-Man, but. Like, a lot of stuff that helps grow that bond is, like, uh, the letter he's, like, uh, me and Quentin, uh, Mysterio, uh. Mm. But, uh, Mysterio, actually. Oh, yeah, it was, also that, it was weird that one moment where, like, he, he, he says, call me Quentin, and then later he's like, call me Mysterio. I was like, what the? <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. He that, like, uh, superheroes need, like, a catchy name, I guess. I don't know. Like, like, but he called you Mysterio in the first place, and he called him to ask you Quentin, and then out of nowhere, you also went, you creepily ask him to call you Mysterio. <laughs> If you think about this way, like, let's say you're about to die, you're like, oh, help me, Quentin, help me. <laughs> Call me Mysterio. <laughs> I mean, I mean it kind of sounds better if you're like, oh, help me, Mysterio, and uh, help me, Quentin. <laughs> just, just, I'm still waiting for the Mysterio meme. <laughs> Seriously, Mysterio's movie should just become a meme. <laughs> yeah, also the final swing with MJ, that was good. Yeah. And then she's like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> Texting while swinging. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of, that's kind of made me some other parody. Like, okay, I, I kind of watched a lot of Spider-Man Far From Home parodies. <laughs> and, and, like, that was an air joke was, like, like he was texting while swinging, and, like, he ran into a building, and then, like, there's, like, a little sign, like, like no texting while swimming. <laughs> I guess we can move on to LEGO accuracies, and though I'm sure there's some, uh, some other pauses I can possibly think of, but... Alrighty. Uh, LEGO sets, very accurate. Maybe it might be the most accurate wave yet. Definitely more than in game. Yeah, that's for sure. Captain America bike. <laughs> yep. <laughs> cough, cough. Uh, the um, the um, Hulk uh, helicopter. <laughs> Ultimate Quinjet for the movie strike for, like, for three seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can keep going. Okay. <laughs> Even though it's a good set, cough, cough. Hall of Armor. It's a good set though. Cough, cough. War Machine Buster. Yeah. yeah that, that that was the big one. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, definitely a very accurate wave, like, the Venice set was pretty accurate, and, um, oh yeah, that was another cool thing I saw, was I saw someone actually went to Venice, and they took their Far From Home Lego with them, and they actually took a picture oh, of the yeah. Lego, was right next to the bridge, the actual yeah, bridge. Yeah, I saw that with OSRS. Yeah, that was amazing, that was cool. I mean, even that set, even comes with, like, I get, it's kind of like the, uh, Bell Tower. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, there you go, you can recreate Spider-Man giving himself a... <laughs> Seriously, I'm not seeing when he hits his head, I can almost feel it. Because <laughs> I feel I have hit my head many times uh, before. Yeah, you don't want to hear me after I hit my head. <laughs> it's not it's not, it's not, not a good thing to hear. But, but yeah, I almost feel it, like, like it's just kind of one of those, ooh, moments. Yeah. But, but yeah, that... That, that one guy in Captain Marvel, if he sees his old granny get hit, he's like, ooh! <laughs> but... But yeah. It is a little weird that the Hydra Mimni figure's got an actual face, though. Mm. Right. But, I feel like uh, Lego was actually expecting uh, uh, Hydra Man to be an actual guy when in the movie he was really just. Yeah. Still ticked off about that, but. Well, I got, I, I got uh, something to mention whenever we get to the start jet thing. Mm. Yeah, we can, we can go ahead. We'll come back okay. to Old Man later. Um. Okay, so on the. I, I don't own the set yet, but on the box, I like how it shows Mysterio fighting nothing. <laughs> yeah, so true. <laughs> Just like fighting midair. Like, he's not even near one of the drones, so yeah. he's not fighting anybody. <laughs> so they're just like, well, we don't know if he's good or bad in this scene. Yeah. <laughs> right. I just think it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I won't be able to see that now. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the, it's just like on the front of the box, he's like, he's just facing something, trying to blast it, but yeah. nothing there. <laughs> yeah, nothing's there. He's, he's, he's trying to fight the Invisible Man. Yeah. He's trying to fight Drax. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drax, I, I didn't know. Drax is completely still. Yeah. <laughs> Plot twist, Dra uh, Drax was in the Spider-Man sense. I know it's an old meme, but still. I thought it was funny that meme uh, when the in-game trailer came out where there's like that missing spot. People were like, <laughs> Drax is in that shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, and then the Walt Man set was, I, I, it's, I thought was, I was able to see this in the second trailer, um, but it's still true. Like, that, that set was uh, very accurate. Like, the only thing that's inaccurate is the little, like, you know, like st traffic signs and whatnot just spewing onto him, but besides that. He is absorbing metal in the movie, so, you know, it's, it's kind of accurate, but it's not, like, specific accurate. Right, but besides, but it is, it is, that was pretty accurate. And then... I, I want to go back to the start jet uh, real quick. Okay. Um, they really should have included the little suit building uh, bay in the back with yeah. the red and black suit. Yeah, that would have been cool. Uh, the upgraded suit, yeah. Two, instead of having the little suit... Like a little lab back there to build the suit. Yeah, that would have been cool. That probably would have bumped up the price, though, but that would have been cool. I mean, I don't understand those little blue bomb things. Like, what the heck are those supposed to be? <laughs> um, you're supposed to drop them out of the airplane so the kids can have fun bombing. You know what else would be fun? Building a freaking new suit. <laughs> well, exactly how would that work, though, because, like, I don't know. Like, have a little thing to put the red and black suit back there, like, maybe some little droid arms or something. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess you'd be able to build the suit, but not really build the suit, you know? I don't know. And, heck, I mean, you could still keep a little Spider-Man dropping feature. Just stay out those stupid bombs. <laughs> well, at the same time, like, Lego, you know, they, they had to make this a concept art, and they didn't know that they, he was going to build the, uh, a thing in the movie, you know? True about that, but they knew 
knew there was going to be a red and black suit in the movie. It's like well, who, who knows if they, the promotional stuff. Well, who knows they, if they 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 if that wasn't said, maybe they didn't know about that either. Yeah, I mean, they had to though. I mean, I'm sure that the red and black suit was they did concept art for for they actually like did it in the movie. I don't know. Right. Well, but I still like the set, though. I really do. Right. Like, like that's probably the only thing that kind of sets back to the set is it, that is like it. It should have been either the drone tag set that included the the upgraded suit or the the minifigure pack. Yeah, like that minifigure pack would have. I mean, it's already flying off shelves, but it would have like been sold out all the time on if it had the red and black suit. Right. Like, oh yeah, that was, that was another thing that surprised me is even. <laughs> Heck, even the with, ac with like I said, accuracy. Even that, uh, even that minifigure pack is accurate. I mean, heck, it even comes with a drone. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think that's. Oh yeah, that, that's that was another good scene too. Was um, like I honestly during the like for a while in the final act, I was actually more caring about um, <laughs> about Happy and the students than uh, Mysterio and, ha and Spider Man. Oh yeah, uh, Happy, you still alive? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, they were using the weapons. That was cool. I think Happy was like, give me that axe, and then Neville's like, uh, well, that's not actually an axe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Showing the nerd part of him. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, sadly, that Mayfigure pack is sold out. Hopefully, they come back in stock of it, because I, I still need to have it, so. Yeah. So, when you get that. And then, the Malt Man set, it's accurate. I mean, I like the Night Monkey minifigure. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been funny if it, on the box it just said Night Monkey, and then like everyone just sees the box and they're like, "What?" And then they see the movie, they're just laughing. <laughs> yeah, the only reason they called they did Night Monkey was to set the joke for later. Like, I don't know, maybe he's a spider monkey. <laughs> That's what they should have called him. Was they should have called him a spider monkey. <laughs> I mean, because uh, Peter was like, uh, yeah, it's just some uh, UK ripoff of Spider-Man, uh, like Night Monkey or something like that, Spider Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. Uh, but I mean, um, unfortunately, we didn't see no fireman in the movie. <laughs> well, he might have, you never know. <laughs> Maybe in the background, but he, he deserves more than just a cameo. Yep. <laughs> the, the Hail, the Almighty Fireman. Now just imagine instead of, the, you know, the, the true hero of Far From Home. Anymore, it's just the fireman doing cameos. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The fireman, the almighty fireman, the true hero of Far From Home who saved everyone from Europe. Like, if, if Mr. was smart, that's what he would have done. <laughs> um, we forgot to talk about the third end credit scene. It's the fireman coming in, the Spider Man saying, I'm putting together a team of remarkable people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> No, second favorite part after G. Joe and Jameson. <laughs> He's a mess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually agree with him when it comes to Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> my, my favorite part, though, is, uh, thanks to Tony Stark. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I do love the Lego Spider-Man Far From Home sets. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I do technically, when recording this, have an entire wave except the main figure pack now, so that's great. I still need to get the minifigure pack and the jet. Yep. Um, I think the Molt Man, though, my problem is he keeps falling over, which was annoying, especially when I was trying to do a stop motion with him, and he kept having his legs fall over, so I kind of wish they could have made him a little more sturdy. That's my only problem with him is, you know, uh, I call him Wobbly Man. Right. Yeah, Wobbly Man. <laughs> and, um, love Hydra Man Tack. Yeah. And... Uh, still building drone dark set, so opinion to be <laughs> presented. I think I might have also messed up that build a little bit during that stream, so I've been rebuilding. <laughs> oh. Yep. Well, not a big thing. I didn't have to, like, hopefully, like, thankfully it wasn't a winter village situation where I had to, you know, restart over, but, yeah, still. Uh, oh, another problem I kind of have with the Malt Man set is, like, the the whole dripping, like, oh, statue is cool, but it gets in the way of posability. That's true. Right. The chains ain't so much, but like the, uh, or you know, like the chain pieces they use, but right. it's mostly the antenna pieces. Right, yeah, even the chains were accurate too. Like I saw like the lava spewing from Molten Man in the movie, and I was like, yep, those are totally the chains. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't see no, uh, you know, big Gatling gun on his arm. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been funny if he like literally had like, a Gatling gun shooting off a little, li a little lava, <laughs> a little like, <laughs> like, 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 like molten lava balls. <laughs> Huh. If he'd done that, then they would have been in my top three Spider-Man movies. 
<laughs> yeah, like, like if they just if, it, if the movie wasn't so confusing and they had the fireman and Mysterio had better motivations and he shot molten love balls, then it would have been in my top three Spider-Man movies. <laughs> Uh, and add to that J. John Jameson, and yes, it would have been great. <laughs> but. I mean, I mean, I think the Far From Home, or the Far From Home wave, I, I thought it was better than the uh, Homecoming wave. Yeah, I, I, I can see, I, I liked the Homecoming wave, but yeah, I can see that. I don't know, the ATM uh, set wasn't really my kind of thing. It's a good set and all, but I don't know. Mm, I liked that one. Get the you know the vulture set that came out. That's a good set, and I would uh, you know like them to do the Stark plane. Mm. And um, oh yeah, also um, they're positive. I do like the setting of the movie. Like I don't know how much they do for this time uh, setting in the movie, but um, it, like some people are complaining because uh, I guess a lot who prefer for Spider Man to be in you know traditional location. But I kind of liked the change. It was kind of cool to see Spider Man in Europe. Yeah, like with all the you know like. He fought differently according to the, like, architecture of the places he's fighting in. Mm, right. So, I did like that. So. So, yeah, do we have much to say about uh, Far From Home until I forget something, or are we good? I think that's about it for me. I really said, you know, what I wanted to say. I might have my popular opinion here, but, yeah, I do think for now I do probably like Homecoming better. Because I think, I think Homecoming did some things a little better, like better villain, but... Yeah, I think I liked Far From Home a little bit more. Like, okay, I like... They're both really good movies, though. Right, like, Far, Far From Home is technically bigger and better, but I think Homecoming is a tad bit a bit better. Like, like, like both movies did things uh, uh, better than uh, the other, but I don't know. I, I think I think just Homecoming had some things better. I, mean, I can see that. I mean, they, to be honest, they could probably flip back and forth for me. I mean, I have watched uh, Homecoming more than, like, uh, Far From Home, but... Right. I'll probably have a Spider-Man ranking video out uh, sooner or later. Probably when I'm done with all my Spider-Man look-back videos, then I'll do it. Nice. So, like, I think I was even writing the um, the ranking video, which got annoying because, like, I was writing in notes, and, like, notes does not understand ranking vid rankings apparently because like i write down like no number eight and like you know next line says number nine i can't raise number nine so like i'm trying to write number seven but as it keeps saying nine so i was like Ugh. <laughs> so basically don't write ranking videos and notes <laughs> oh yeah and then also another thing to add um like um i know someone like i asked him about far from home and uh he said he liked it more than homecoming because he felt like peter got to mature a little more in it which I suppose that's kind of true, sort of. Uh, I mean, like he's not uh, he's not mature, but he gets to learn how to be mature. So, kind of, um, yeah, you know, kind of like yeah, what you said, step step up your game or something like that, whatever the line is. Uh, it's time for you to step up. Yeah, and kind of feel like there's some other stuff that I was thinking about talking about, I just forgot. So. Sure. Oh yeah, or um, that it was also still a cool experience though. To like um, one of my friends that I went to see a movie with, uh, she didn't know that Mysterio was a villain or not because you know, like I obviously knew, but she, I mean, she, I didn't know because like you know, she's just the type that she goes to a Spider-Man movie for a Spider-Man movie, you know. Yeah. So like, she didn't know that Mysterio was a villain or not. So like, I think it's literally in the bar scene after she gave him her glasses. She was like, "Are you a bad guy? Are you?" Or I think it was like, "Are you good? Are you good? Are you good?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, like she's saying that, and like me, but I'm going, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, they must have did that in the trailers for like the average movie cover, kind of like that. Mm, right. But that's kind of like when, like, that was another thing I forgot to mention in the Cat Marvel podcast. It's kind of like of when, like, in Cat Marvel, when uh, Goose turned, finally went into lurking form, there was one kid behind me that went, oh, I hate cats now. <laughs> 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 that was fun. I forgot to mention that. That was funny. It's about it for Far From Home that I can think of for now. But yeah. Again, sorry. <laughs> We've probably been going on about Far From Home way too long, so let's move on. Some people move on, but we do. <laughs> There's a twist, that's very twisty. All right, and then there, quick brief thing for all you guys that have stayed on this long. Um, Stranger Things, that's out now. Now, so haven't seen the new season yet, but Fluffy has. So thoughts? Uh, on the new season? Yeah. No spoilers. Oh, it was great. The end. Oh, yeah, I heard, Probably my second favorite season. Mm, I heard the end was kind of like a cliffhanger, so. Kind of. They kind of, 
they kind of they end it where it's they kind of end the season where it's kind of indefinitely ended, but it's also sets up for more. Mm. Right. Does that make sense? Right. I think someone on the live stream already kind of spoiled part of it uh, for me, uh, but that's okay. That uh, dot 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 died and dot 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 died. Oh yeah. But I'll I'll ask you about that later. But um, but you uh, mostly liked it as good as the other seasons. I mean, I liked better in season one. Mm, really? But no one's good at season two. Mm. Mm, so I can, can so you can guess the ranking from there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you don't have much, too much to say about it then? Uh, I mean, not without going into spoilers, not, nah, but like, okay. at least this one didn't have a, you know, like a filler episode like season two. Mm-hmm. Right, and um, and did have a 4th of July theme, right? And that's why it came out 4th of July? Yeah, I mean, but I would have thought they would have played up more with the 4th of July thing, which, don't get me wrong, it does have 4th of July, like, things in it, but like, it's not like played up like they lead you to think it is, like, in the trailers and stuff, mm-hmm. in the marketing. Kind of like Far From Home. Kind of like Far From Home with the multiverse. <laughs> but anyways, but yeah, and then also if see, uh, season three out now, like that means we might be able to briefly talk about the Stranger Things set since we never got to talk about it. Because I think I have quite a bit to say about it. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. The, the colors are beautiful. Like, you got the uh, kind of orange color, and then you got, like, the blue, and you can, like, flip the box upside down. It's so awesome. Mm. Oh, yeah. Can you flip the box upside down and make it the same or something? Like, it has, like, the Lego Stranger Things logo upside down, too, so that's pretty cool. Mm. Nice. It's kind of like I got Princess Bride duty once I was like that with the title. Yeah. And then, like... $200 there is like a really good price for the set. I mean, it could have been a little bit better, but right. for what you get, I think it's really good. Mm. Yeah, again, like it's going crazy with $200 uh, sets this year, but. Yeah. My only complaint with the set, though, is they include a little minifigure stand, but it only can fit four minifigures. Mm. Yeah, and isn't there like five figures? It's like uh, nine figures. Oh, wow. Could you, could you not just add, like, five more slots or make it, like, a double row, kind of? Mm. Or maybe it's because, like, like isn't there only four kids? So maybe they were just trying to... It's it's only for the kids or something. No, if it was only for the kids, they would have included five spots because Will can't fit on there with the four other kids. Mm. Uh, like, I mean, at least include five spots. Mm. Well, Jeep. Hopper's Jeep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cool that you can hang upside down and uh, stay stay there, too. Which, I mean, the coolest part about the set is how you flip the whole set upside down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's one of the coolest features in the Lego set I've ever seen. Yeah, that's for sure. And and cool of that you do ha- still have the feature of, like, uh, real world and upside down world, so. I mean, and the Demogorgon minifigure is just awesome. Oh, yeah. And you can also uh, close the mouth. Oh, okay, yeah, like, it's got a printed closed head on uh, under the, like, headpiece. Yep. And, uh... And, like, so different references inside the house too. Like, I mean, it's got a, it's not the best interior, but you know, it's got it's decently uh, detailed interior. Yeah, and the Christmas lights, which I think you could light up. It's got like a little light brick in there. Yeah, and uh, and the Jaws, uh, I mean, shark poster. <laughs> <laughs> it's even got like a season three reference with uh, Will's like wizard hat. Oh wow! So uh, Lego uh, doing things in advance again. I mean, this house is mostly based off season one, but it's also got a season two reference with, like, a pumpkin and hopper truck, and then season three reference. Mm. And, oh yeah, and the figures are pretty good, too. Like, we kind of already talked about the leaks, but it's still good. I mean, mm. should have done, like, a slightly new piece for Lucas, because his the top of his head is just smooth. <laughs> but, and also, I kind of wish they came with a separate hair piece for Eleven, so it's not just a wig, but whatever. I mean, but Tustin is the best minifigure. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it was a nice uh, hair hat combo. I think it was Jane that said this is, like, the best, like, real person turned into a minifigure, like, ever. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it looks just like him turned into a figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I-, I wonder how many of the Stranger Things cast members got to have the set. Probably oh, yeah, all got it, if they wanted it. Probably. Nice. But. I do wonder, like, 
uh, if they'll do any other sets, because we know, like we said earlier, we did a whole thing on the Comic-Con exclusive earlier, so that means uh, possibly more sets, maybe a Starcore mall would be nice. Mm-hmm. Something like that. But still kind of feel like the house... Yeah, kind of feel like the house is the most obvious thing, but... Yeah. Which, which yeah, it's interesting, because, like, I was, um... Like, I was kind of guessing it was going to be the house. I think me and Jacob were talking about that. Like, I don't remember if it was actually in episode three or not, but, um... Like, it might have been, but not sure, but, um... But, yeah, I do gotta say that was my friend... My buddy, Jacob Bricks, a lot. He did kind of call that there's going to be a Stranger Things set, so... Good call. And, um... And, yeah, I think both of us were kind of thinking it was probably going to be a house set, and it was a house set, but they went the extra mile by having it go upside down, so... Yeah... But yeah, stranger. Uh, yeah, stranger figures are good. <laughs> wow, <laughs> slip of the tongue there. And but yeah, definitely a very unique build. Don't think we have too much else to say. So, do we? I absolutely love this set, though. Right. Yeah, I, I hope you get it soon, someday. Yeah, like, there's a couple of those sets where I'm like, I'm gonna get those someday. This is one of them, along with that new Jurassic Park D to C set. Oh yeah. And then like. Some of the UCS Star Wars sets, or like some of those sets, I'm like, I'm gonna get those one day. Mm. Yeah, I still want to get UCS Cloud City, which I think I saw that's like 60 bucks off on Amazon, so keep that in mind. I'll get the uh, Million Falcon one day. Oh yeah, eight hundred dollars. Oh yeah, I think that might be my first video I saw of you too. Was I think you made a video reporting on that? I think that might be my first video I saw of you. That's a long time ago. Yeah, I think that might be my first video I saw of you. So. Uh, seeing a million Falcon, like, my Walmart's got, like, the Kessel Run Million Falcon for, like, 60 bucks. Nice. Wait, 60 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> Probably won't get it, though. Won't. Won't. Yeah, I won't. Yeah. I mean, I have that set, and it's still a pretty good uh, set, but I can understand why you probably wouldn't want it. 60 bucks is a pretty good deal for it, though, considering what it usually starts out as. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not over 100 No, we're going to get one next year. <laughs> or this year. <laughs> <laughs> cough, cough, Lance. Uh, uh, Luke's Lance Peter, again. But he's got a poncho. <laughs> yeah. Is it actually weird that that's actually what I was thinking when I saw the set? <laughs> <laughs> like, they made like that Simpsons meme where it's like, it's the same thing, but he's, Luke's got a new poncho. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, it still looks kind of the same as the last Land Speeder. I just got that Land Speeder like a year ago. So, yeah. I'm not really interested in the Land Speeders. Yeah, right. Like, it's also, like, like, also, it's not only that. I also have Land Speeder right in front, like, before that. Like, Land Speeder from, like, 2012 or something. So, I already have enough Land Speeders. Thank you. And then that one came in the canteen is that? Mm. The one with the poncho or a different one? Uh, it was, like, from 2014. Right. I think also both the Landspeeders from the Cantina and the normal Landspeeder set are also the same Landspeeder, too. I know, like, the one from 2017, used, like, some pipes on it that made it different or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I think this probably has been a long episode by now, so... Because, <laughs> like, far, we were on for, Far From Home for a while, so... I think that's pretty much all the topics. I think just one last thing before we wrap things up. I think both of us created new IMDb pages, so there yeah, you go. Um... Do have Golden Knight IDB page and Fluffy started one after I did, so I think I think we literally both started ours on the exact same day, so that's cool, I think. <laughs> that's my first IMDB page, but not really like my first movie review kind of website thing. Right. Right. Uh same here with uh, me. But um but yeah, that's way how you can get uh, more of our movie opinions, like, I think I just signed up on the day of me recording this, and I've already gone on there, like, rated, like, almost 30 movies already, so, <laughs> gone, went a little crazy. I've done, like, one or two movies so far. Right, I think I saw, like, you rated Far From Home or something. Yeah. On, on INDB. But yeah, you guys can check that out, I can probably link both of ours in the comments or something, or if, if I do this as a premiere, I can put it in the chat. Yeah, it might possibly do this as a premiere, so we'll see. I, I think you guys will probably know uh, if I do or not later. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, and then also if you want to get more Fluffy's opinions, I think he also has Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes, and Twitter, so there you go. Okay, so I also have a Twitter where uh, uh, I usually give like a, a three, four sentence review before like 
as soon as I get out there, it's pretty much when I post it. So if you want like a review before my review videos come out, uh, go follow me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I, th I think I've had visited your Twitter before, and I see I saw those. I think I saw your quick uh, tweet on Far From Home and uh, Annabelle. Yeah. Which I, I have that link to like on my channel uh, about thing and all that. Yeah. I think it's also in most of your descriptions, so. I put it in every description of my videos. Yep, and while, and while we're at it with self-promoting, anything else we want to uh, promote? I mean, I guess both our YouTube channels, like if you haven't subscribed to either of us yet, there you go. And uh, but also have Discord and Hangouts, so. Or I have Hangouts, and then also Discord. And then he has Discord. I don't, so. I don't have a public hangs out, but I have a Discord. Yep. But, yeah. But yeah, now you know. Now you guys know how to socialize with us. So see you there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so for now, that's it uh, for this podcast. Thank you for watching. Um, hopefully, like, like, sorry if we, uh, you know, maybe got sidetracked too many times or negative opinions time for me. But let us know what you guys uh, thought. I think I know what a lot of people think of Far From Home. But um, anyways, let us know anyways, and let us know what you think of other. Uh, topics, uh, but uh, yeah, until next time, uh, I'm Daniel. And I'm uh, Mr. Fluffy Pants. And that concludes this episode of the, the Golden Light Podcast. Until next time, laters, and have a good, nice day. Yeah. Thanks to Tony Stark.